I'm offended. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for the gifts of life that you abundantly enjoy this afternoon. May our tears be a song of praise and thanksgiving. And for all, for all the many blessings you have bestowed on us, and may all the effort be to What a your son, our Lord. Amen. What a play, play after play after play. And there it is. And she is wow. taking over. Love that. He's got a lot of room to run. The greatest conference in the country is showing out tonight, gentlemen. Wow. Hey, run. That's number one on Sports Center right there. They put Davis into the paint, and he puts it in for a two point lead. Your WCAC champions. And today's amazing WCAC Game of the Week on behalf of First Amendment Sports. I'm Ken Marangolo. He's Tim Strachan. <clears throat> I'm looking forward to this matchup. This is one that we had on our calendar from, for, for a long time, only because Forestville and, and uh, McNamara, they know how to do football on Saturdays, man. So it's such a great atmosphere, especially for homecoming. Bishop McNamara Mustangs are welcoming the Archbishop Carroll Lions to Tioka Jackson Field for the Mustang homecoming. We uh, got the 1973 City Championship representatives of the, of the Mighty Mustangs from, uh, from that year uh, at, at uh, center field. Uh, they, 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 they've come home. Uh, we got an amazing day of weather. Got a great matchup, two teams. Uh, you talk about rivalries in the WCAC. Archbishop Carroll and Bishop McNamara have been getting it on for a long time, T, as you well know, all the way back to our days uh, and, and certainly uh, decades before. Well, in our days, they got them every single year. Now they have to, like, make a point of scheduling this yes. because they're in two different divisions. And it's great to see that this rivalry and, and this tradition can cont continue. We got some some new and newish coaches. We'll get to we'll talk about that. Let's uh, talk a little bit about the players we're going to watch today. T, I believe we'll be starting on the Archbishop Carroll side. And uh, let's see. We talked to Coach Darian Quick this week, and we got some players to watch from the Archbishop Carroll lines. And uh, you know, we, we, I, I was out there on the field early, and uh, you could just tell number one, Demil Bostic, the uh, Holy Cross commit, the linebacker. The junior, uh, well, defensive back and wide receiver, but he's a he's a big boy. He plays everything, and he, he hits hard uh, on both sides of the ball. Number one, T. Number two, a guy we've we've been able to cover now for for a, a few yeah, years. Yeah, Ronald Burke Jr. We were talking to Coach Quick earlier this week. He just said, "Look, he's a leader since he was a in the tenth grade. He, he's all Carol, right? He, he he leads tours. He leads prayer groups when the when the priest can't be there to say say he's service. A man. They ask him to step in. Apparently, he does everything." at the school, on the field, and off the field. And those are the things that we love to hear about these kids. Not, we, we always like to praise them for the, what they do on the field, but especially when the coaches point out the stuff that they do off the field and that they're going to be leaders in our society because they're leaders here as young men. Jerry and Barry, number five, the senior linebacker and fullback. Another guy, Coach Quick, uh, spoke highly about him, talking about one of the smartest kids uh, on the field, no matter what field he plays on. He's got over 20 offers. All the service academies want him. All the Ivies want him. Uh, 4.2 GPA and a gifted gifted athlete. And uh, again, uh, 
culminating in number six, Cam Williams, a guy we've had a chance to watch now uh, for a few years, just an absolute dog on the field, senior defensive back and wide receiver. He's a leader uh, in, in the clubhouse. And he does everything right, and he, he is an absolute, uh, uh, you know, Lying through and through, as, as we would say. And then, of course, they're led by Coach Darian Quick. We said we had a chance to talk to him. It's his first year on the job, taking over for Rob Harris. Uh, and uh, I, he's, well, Rob he's fun Harris, to talk to. He, here's what he pointed out. Rob Harris left for, for a great opportunity, uh, but he left in June. And that's so late in the cycle of the football season yep. or the football calendar that Coach Quick was behind the ball being a head coach for the first time. But – he said he, he's worked on the culture. He's worked on the things that he wanted to do as a head coach. He's got a great, you know, group of, of coaches that are helping him out, and he feels like he's hitting his groove right about now. Oh, on the McNamara sideline, we got uh, some guys to talk about there as well. Number 26, the French-Canadian Charles Fortin, the junior from Canada. He is showing the, all of North America what he's all about. You can see there it says, I'm big in Canada. Number 12, the quarterback. Now I know a Miguel, the senior, and uh, I tell you what, he is, uh, uh, he is he, he is representative of the evolution of the offense here in Forest Just watching him in warm up. That's right. He's got every he's got all the tools. He looks the part. Dylan Newman, number seven. You heard the if you were, if you were tuning in early enough, you heard the crowd go crazy for number seven as he went on the field. He he's been catching the attention of everybody that he's been playing. Uh, we, we were told he's got you, reckless you, abandon and bad intentions. You know when the numbers stretched, that's a, oh, dude, yeah. that's a dude to look out for. And uh, talk, speaking of <laughs> speaking of stretch, number eight, Lugard. Oh yeah, Edipai, Edipai, Edipai. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, we, you know, on You'll the basketball there. court. By the end of the day. But Lugard, we just call him Lugard. Uh, he, we saw some play some wide receiver. The guy's a six seven defensive Wait till end. Wait you see him. He's he, he's the, he's a monster. And Coach there. Greg Calhoun in his second year on the sidelines for Bishop McNamara. As we are going to get underway, and the Mustang is going to kick it off. And Cam Williams. With his back foot on the 14-yard line, he takes off down the he's middle of the field, cruise. and he's got a seam. He's going to – oh. And the Mustangs are able to make a, basically a touchdown saving tackle on special teams. Late flag comes flying Jason through the Adams air. Adams saves the day on the first play of the game by saving a touchdown there with a great tackle, running him down from behind. Coach Quick and the Carolines starting quick. And uh, you might see uh, the special teams of the Mustangs try to keep the ball out of number six's hands uh, on kicks. For, for the rest of the way. <laughs> Certainly a great way to start the day if you're the Carroll offense. Awesome field position. Unsportsmanlike conduct uh, is going to go against Carroll. As, is, as I say, great field position. They go, they go from one side of the field maybe to the other side. Yeah, they're going to be put on the wrong side of the right timeline. By, by a yard. So they're on the 49-yard line, it looks like. And we're going to get a look here at, at the quarterback for Carroll. And we talked about, about Arnold Kijamble. Now this kid led PG County in tackles last year. And they re realized he's got quite an arm. That's just amazing. <laughs> yes. he, led the, he led a county in tackles. One of the baddest ass starting quarterback right now in the country. And uh, they got him under center. We'll see what the Lions start out with. It's an inside handoff right away to All Ronald Carroll. Burke. All Carroll. Yeah, the guy does. Ronald Burke does everything. Mr. Everything. I believe he was the homecoming king. Uh, or Prince. He's everything. He, you're, oh my God, he is everything. He is. He's absolutely <laughs> everything for Carroll, and we love him. All right, the runs the food drives, in. does does it all, and he does he does do it all. He's going to run it on offense. He's going to play in the secondary and at, at the uh, linebacker level. As we got about second and eight here for the Lions, right about on the fifty yard line. Arnold, another handoff. Berg is mad, and I tell you what, right away, as uh, who was that? that? I believe that was Zach Betts. And the helmets are flying, and we got chippiness oh, right yeah. out of the gate. We're looking for some composure. Well, this is the rivalry you're talking about. Dylan Newman lost his helmet, and more flags come out. More flags come out. They're like magicians with like the flags are tied together in their sleeves, and they just it's just one after another coming on out here. Uh, you hope that nobody's going to get tossed if they had two flags thrown on them, two personal fouls like that. I think there's that's cause for being disqualified. And we talked, we didn't get a chance to, to talk a lot about him, but you know uh, Zach Betts, number fifty-eight, the senior defensive lineman. Uh, Coach Calhoun was talking to us about him. You saw him meet the ball carrier in the hole. This is a guy who he said, hey, if you coach football, he's the guy you want on your team. He does everything right. Oh, so he would bet on bets. 
He would bet on bets. High at, character. And also a guy uh, who, who will see play two ways. I was going to say, you're selling him short. He plays defense and offense well, in the trenches. I'll tell you, he played some defense on that play. We're going to see which way the referees are going to march. All right, so first call is going to be unsportsmanlike on McNamara. I'm pretty sure this is going to be offsetting. Oh, and uh, we're going to call that offsetting. And uh, nobody, I didn't get the ejection sign. Everyone's staying on the field. And I believe they're dead ball foul, so it will stay third down, if I'm not mistaken. Now, I, I believe that's the case. I believe everything happened after the whistle. It's going to be third and eight. And uh, I believe Carroll's setting up a few inches in McNamara territory just on the other side of the 50. And Arnold's in the shotgun. And he's got behind him, he's joined by, I believe, it's TK Davis. The sophomore. And if you want to keep your. We're keep our eyes here on number nine uh, on uh, our side of the field, Kyrie Wynn. You've been watching Carroll football long enough. You know one thing, they bring speed on the outside. Uh, they graduated one of the fastest human beings on the planet in Nick Harbor. And this guy, Kyrie Wynn, is every bit uh, uh, in, in that mold. Well, he flies. They have to get to our field because it's third and nine. They got to get, get to the sticks. Arnold, he's got a little bit of time. He's being chased down. He's going to be. Oh, my goodness. Now he, he let the that. ball. The, the ball is. He, I believe they're going to. through that. It's going to be incomplete, but they're also going to call intentional grounding because yep. he was not outside of the tackle box. He tried to get rid of it. Good effort, but. Yeah, got to be smart. Got to be smart. At least he didn't take the sack, but that was got to have somebody in the area when you throw the ball. That was at least five, if not six, McNamara Mustangs in the backfield. And he, he had about a one and a half, maybe two seconds to get rid of that ball. And when he didn't, he was he was met. Well, really, hats off to the McNamara defense. They start off in a bad position. The, 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 the personal foul after the whistle of the opening kickoff backed Carroll up uh, over the 50-yard line again, and then they just kept going the wrong way. They couldn't get anything going, and McNamara now you know, got out of a situation where they were in a, in a bad field position move, and now they're going to get the ball. And you got, looks like uh, Ben Chandler and... Ben Chandler looks like an athlete. It says... T.J. Chandler's, well, we saw him on the basketball position, court. It says athlete. Yeah, and, he, uh, he's, he's uh, we, we see him on the court. He plays a little football on the basketball court, too. And uh, the punter for Carroll, he's going to be just uh, right around the 20-yard line. If the referee that's running onto the field right now because he's late throws a flag on the next play, there's something there's something wrong. Okay, looks <laughs> like Carroll got a timeout at the last second. I believe they're going to give it to him so they won't get the delay a game. And, uh, yeah, everything was going right for that first play for Carroll, and they've been marching the wrong way. Uh, a, a couple of lapses in composure by both squads here on the first drive. You can see, uh, you, you watch Coach Quick and Coach Calhoun. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're getting these guys under control. I think they're going to settle down, settle in. We talk about it all the time, though. These, these kids know each other. Yep, they, they play ball their whole lives. They either with each other, uh, you know, on the same team, or they played against each other. Uh, and now they're, you know, against each other in high school when the stakes are a little bit higher. And, and there's there's more than just winning a game. There's pride. There's there's neighborhood, you know, bragging rights. Yeah. Uh, well, that, except for Charles Fortin. Unless these guys are up in French uh, that's Canada. True. That's true. But he, he did come down here for a reason. And he said he wanted to play American football, and he, oh, he yeah. came to a great place. Yeah, great school and a great league. Great culture, homecoming today. All the alumni are out in the new pavilion. It looks it, great. Everything out here. looks great. It's, it's this classic uh, McNamara Saturday. You got the tailgates on the hill, people park their cars. That's the best part. It goes on. The, on the hills. Grills are going, the fish is frying. I mean, this is home. Good fish sandwich. Ben Chandler is going to bounce Dylan up. Newman? Whoa. Yeah, he he was. Dylan he, Newman just took out one of the upbacks. <laughs> we got a flag on the field. It looks like it's gonna it's gonna come as either a hold against the McNamara uh, wing wingman or I think it's gonna go against McNamara, but we'll see here. That flag came out by the side judge, right around where the gunner was trying to make his way upfield. Either way, it'll be first and ten for the Mustangs. And we'll see get a, get a look at that offense. Nine, Noah Miguel at quarterback. They're already lined up, ready to go. They know what they want to do. 
I got a feeling they want to get number 26 the ball early and often. And the Mustangs will be backed up here and it is going to go against McNamara. I don't know if you can see him. He may be coming in the in the right side of the screen, right about there. At a poye. I mean the guy just stands out. Yeah. At six seven. Yeah, that's a big target. I mean, as a quarterback, you just look out there and you're like, oh, can I just throw it to him every time? And I know it can get that ball out there. This looks like a, almost like an old school, almost run and shoot. You got four wide, quick pass. Out to Miguel's right. And it's going to be a gain, gain of, a, we'll call it like maybe uh, five yards. But as a former quarterback, I love it because one, you get your first completion. It's quick, it's easy, it's a, it's a little hitch. You kind of get that little confidence. All right, you got that first jitter out here, out of the way. Now you can kind of, you know, focus in and hone in on the game. And you got Lugard now working the short side of the field. We'll see what McNamara wants to do here. Second and about four and a half, five yards to go. And Fortin bangs his way through the middle. Short game. The initial hit was made by number seven, Aaron Marbury. What a nice way to fill a hole. 5'11", 200. It's third down, I don't know if he got anything on that. He, Fort, Fort was met at, at the line of scrimmage. Third and medium here. Miguel to pass, he wants the sideline. And we're gonna get a flag, and I yeah. think they're gonna get some hands on the wide receiver. That was a little, that was a, that was, that was uh... the See, the problem for the, a corner who's guarding a 6'7 guy is there's so much, there's so much Lugard to cover. I mean, <laughs> you're, and if your hands are anywhere near him, there's no way to hide it. Uh, I, I, I talked about it. I, I like the call. Go to your 6'7 guy. Yeah. 50-50 uh, ball. He's going to come down with a majority of them, uh, no matter how many you throw. Uh, but I'm not so sure I really agree with the call. Sure. First and 10, Mustangs. Mm, Still in Mustang territory. That close. Jamil Bostic Jr. there, number one in coverage. And there's the handoff, and he's met in the backfield and dropped for a loss. And I believe that was Ronald Burke. Uh, bringing Fortin Aaron, down. Aaron Marbury again in yeah. on that tackle. I mean, look at this pressure. Look at this. Yep, there's Marbury. I mean, the pressure that Carroll's it front four Marbury, is getting, yeah. right, getting right now is it's unbelievable. Second and long for the Mustangs at the 40-yard line. Three wide to the left. Lugard on the short side of the field. Fortin joining Miguel in the backfield. Miguel looking to run a little option. He, he gets a man in the hole. It's a gain of maybe a half a yard. It's Cameron Williams. And Jerry and Barry, too, in tackle. on the tackle. Is that Cameron Williams or was that was Jerry, Jerry, and Barry. Jerry and Barry? That was Jerry and Barry. I get my six and my five mixed up from, from, from the corner spot here. Again, when the, when the number stretches a little bit, it's hard, not only is it hard to see. Yeah, well, these are some big boys. They're stretching. And we got another, another flag. flag. A oh, late okay. flag. A sideline warning. Yeah. Just a warning. We got to get we got the get back coach. He's it's still third and long, and they got a warning. Mm, impressed with Carroll's defense right off the bat, especially their run defense. Sun comes out. We got a jump mm. by Marbury, and that'll help the Mustangs a little bit. It's going to get him into third and. Just about manageable. Call it maybe third and about uh, nine and a half yards. A lot of laundry so far. Well, they didn't bring it for nothing. Another clock stop. Referees. Chad, no, okay, they, yeah, they want to pump the clock. On the whistle, we'll get the start. Referee will keep it on the field for this play, I bet. Yeah, he's telling he's telling Ninoa, I got you. 
that's not an uncommon high school football. Good communication between the referee and the quarterback. Miguel is going to have to throw. Looks to his left, comes back out to his right. He's still got some time. Puts the ball in the air. He's going deep. Uh, he had somebody Ben too. Chandler was running down, and he, he, turned, he got turned around, but he was running free. Well, it was a little bit of a scramble drill at the end. It looked like he was going to pull it and, and, and run the ball, but at the last second, Chandler was able to just shake loose, and he took a shot and just overshot him. The it, thing about Nainoa... Would have been a touchdown if he was able to connect. It, 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 he keeps plays alive. He's, uh, you know, he's, he's, good, he's, he's got the legs. He can put it on the ground. Uh, but he's he's keeping play it long enough, and these wide receivers, I think there's there, there's there, there's still some getting used to. Whenever you have a quarterback who can literally keep a play alive to the last second, punt is up. It's away. It's a good one, and it's going to bounce McNamara's way, and that's going to go inside the ten, and it'll be touched down at the six yard line. And that's where the Carolines will start. And that's exactly where we're going to have a great look down the line oh, of scrimmage we're, we're, on this one. I'm right on the line of scrimmage. Yep. So forgive us if it's all the way down at the other end. It's going to be really hard to see numbers. Yeah, we got the best <laughs> vantage point right here. But we're right here next to the Mustang statue, next to the Alumni Pavilion. I'm telling you, man, this is a great atmosphere to watch a football game. Great atmosphere. It's got all. It's a lot of new looks. The pavilion's new. The Alumni Pavilion's new, which is great. The old look of the of, of the, the tailgaters. The, tailgate the new look of this football team, though, Ken, just watching them in warm-ups. What a difference a year makes. This team has a look for McNamara that I haven't seen in a long time. Good athletes, good size. The size is noticeable. McNamara has, has definitely bumped up the size. Both of these teams got some beef. As Arnold gets the ball the way out into the flat. And Bostic, he's going to, I think they're going to get him for a loss of one. <laughs> That's the Holy Cross commit. I know so many guys, alum, that are going to be happy to see and, and root for this young man. Holy Cross, we got a Merrimack. Up we talked north. about a Merrimack guy uh, on the uh, uh, on Cam Williams. But uh, I tell you what, this, schools like them, they, they know what conference to go to to find players. Merrimack in particular. Yep. I think we talked about this with Coach Quick on the, on the call. Mary Mack is not going to get your four-star, five-star, maybe even three-star, but they'll take those two three-star players from the WCAC because they know they're ball players. And that ball, ball is, on, is the on the ground. It's picked up by it the is. Mustangs. And he's, he's going to get fighting. in. Now the, the referee, there's a signal. It's a McNamara Mustangs touchdown, as I believe Jaden Heyman, McNamara linebacker. You're right. Picks the ball up, scoop and score. Uh, the first big play of the game. And Carroll, it's just a late handoff. Yeah, late that decision. Exchange, and then right here, look at Heyman, just pure individual will to get that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they almost went with the old Philadelphia Eagles rugby push push play as they swing and gate here, Ken. Got their way in. Yeah, we'll see what they what they call it to. But they got the kicker in, and they're gonna go with it. And here he comes. And met at the goal line, and he extends the ball up and over the plane. I believe we're going to get a signal, but they're, they're saying no, they didn't, they he didn't no, get it. No, he didn't get it across. And it I'm, looked like I'll, he reached it across. I think that was Daquan Thomas. I don't know if we've got a good angle on that or not. Well, we got, you know we what? It was Luke a David a, down on the on, on the on the camera right there. We'll see. I, we, again, we're sitting right here on the goal line. We know he extended the arm. But the, the Carroll defense, you know, they met him at the one-and-a-half-yard line, and progress was absolutely stopped. So 6 nothing, Mustangs over the lines with six, and a, six minutes and 53 seconds to go here. We're still in the first quarter. And it's well, a good very, start for the homecoming uh, fans. Well, a very fortuitous uh, opportunity for McLaren. They capitalized on it. You, get, you know, so many times we talk about the end of the game, look at the turnover column. You know, the team that has the most turnovers is usually a team that doesn't come out on top. And right now that's, that's true for Carroll, but they got to bounce back here. Can't take Glenn. I got to believe. Uh, I tell you what, pick your poison here. You got Williams and Bostic back here. I don't necessarily know if there's anybody you can, you'd rather get the ball to. You're, you you want to actually try to get it deep. 
or hang it so you can get your players down there. Well, I mean, Bostic already has a reputation coming into the game. Williams already uh, yep. made his presence known on the on the opening kickoff, taking it across the 50. Choose your poison here. It's going to be Williams. Back foot at the nine-yard line, and he takes off. And he's going to be met at about the 16 I, as a special teams unit came out with a little, little bit more uh, yeah, purpose I'd, there I'd for the Mustangs. I'd say they made some adjustments since the last one. <laughs> I think it looked like Andrew Hicks was the first to make contact. And you can give that to the whole right side of the, the kickoff team, actually. It's going to be first and 10 for the Lions at about the, uh, we'll call it the 17-yard line. And T, this matchup is a great matchup for, for the league, not just because you got two different divisions, you know, facing off here, but and not just because of the history, but you talk about two programs that have really put a lot of focus and emphasis on kind of restoring the, the, the programs. We had to restore the roar down on uh, on Harewood for the last few years. I think we, we covered a championship by the Carolines last year. McNamara looking to do something similar as Arnold hands it off inside. T.K. Davis. I love talking to Coach Quick the other night. He said he wanted to put a little bit of his own culture. He wants to continue to restore the reward, put his own culture. So let's be real. That means respect, effort, uh, accountability, and love. Gamble with a great throw deep. And it's defended by Jason Adams. It was a good-looking throw. He was double-covered. Uh, it wasn't necessarily a ball that was going to be picked off, I don't think. He got it down there with some purpose, but... Great effort by the DB. I mean, you can, if you're in the Washington area and you're wearing 21 in the defensive backfield, you got something going on. Oh, yeah. I would say you have confidence yes. to start off. That's a number. It's uh, a highly probably, coveted number. Probably the number one characteristic you want in your DB. Not to mention, you know, we wear the colors. It was, <laughs> we call it maroon and gold at Bishop McNamara, burgundy and gold in, in, in uh, Landover. But it's, it's Redskins colors, third and nine. Arnold back, he's under pressure Ooh. right away. And I'll Trent tell you Taylor. what, Trent Taylor and Lugard, but Trent's going to get the sack. I mean, there's a little bit of a delayed blitz by Trent Taylor. Work to perfection. He's going to enter. There he is right there. And Arnold had no, no, no time no whatsoever chance, to even yeah. see what was going on downfield. And it's going to be... Punt time for, for Carroll, and uh, let's see. Williams. Is that Cam Williams is going to, yeah. no, yeah. I, I think that's the only thing that Ronald Bro uh, Burke Jr. doesn't do. Oh, well, it's a tough snap. He's going to try to get out of the end zone and run it. Oh. He saves a safety. as the McNamara punt coverage team got back and the snap was, was a little bit hard to handle. Yeah, he, he wasn't able to go up high and get the snap, come down and, and put a foot into it before McNamara was right in his face. He did help avoid a touchdown, but unfortunately, great, great field position for McNamara's office starting off at the eight yard line. So it's first and goal from the eight. You would see what Coach Calhoun wants to do here. They were not able to get Fortin going on the last drive. And they got a bigger package in. Look for the, look for the fade here. And it's going to be Fortin lead blocking for Miguel. And he's going for the corner. And he's going to get spun around and dropped. They're going to give him a one-yard gain. Mm. I'm telling you what, I don't, I don't know how much success McNamara is going to have trying to run the ball between the tackles. Carroll has done a great job. Yeah, Early in this game, Ronald Burke of just shutting all that down. Looks like I think McNamara is going to have to go to the air, try to back this defense off. Yeah, Ronald Burke's having his way for the Lions on that on that front. He's coming again. Miguel oh, with the through. keeper. They had the option with Ford and Nine Noah in the end zone for a touchdown for Bishop McNamara. That was good patience for the first time. He didn't have to stutter step. He didn't feel like he had to cut it back inside. He just kind of stayed the course, kept that pitch relationship, and it just opened up for him. And I tell good you, speed. they went to the other side of the field from Ronald Burke Jr. 
number two. Again, I'd be throwing fades all day to number eight. But no, they're going to try and kick this one. Looks like uh, Keontae. Six, Quan seven, Thomas to hold. 6-7 on a football field looks yeah. totally different than 6-7 on a basketball field. Kick is up, and it's good. 13-0, Mustangs over the lines. Yeah, you talk about height. I mean, both these teams, I mean, shoot, was just a year ago we were talking about at least how how, big, how tall is Nick Harbour? He's every bit of 6-7, six, 6-8. Six, if, if, uh, if Nick Harbour is 6-5. He's 6-5. Well, he looks like he's 7-5 uh, and the way he flies. And that, you know, you talk about a, a some tough players to replace. Uh, Nick Harbour is irreplaceable. You don't, yeah, you don't, <laughs> don't replace him at all. You know, if Arnold Kijamal. You put the next best guy you can out there who's probably just a, a great football player. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. Nicholas Harbour had, had special talents, special ability. Yeah, Ky Kyrie Wynn, the senior He'll get wide his receiver. Time. He'll get his time down in South Carolina. Don't you worry. Don't be impatient, everybody. He'll be there. It's so weird to watch Nick Harbour when you see him in track meets. He's so tall, he's so much taller than the other average track players. As Carroll fields it inside the 20. And they'll start with field position at about the 26, 27 yard line. Now Carroll. Mark Butler Jr., the, the, the uh, what will it say he is a sophomore wide receiver on the return. What do you got, T? Carroll's offense, they, they've got to respond here. Uh, they've made a bunch of mistakes, two in particular that have resulted in 13 points. There was the, the fumble uh, in the pass series and then the, the, the punt that they weren't able to get off that had the, the eight-yard short field. So um, Carroll's got to do something. I also have to have, if no points, you have to have a sustained drive. Give your defense a little bit of break here. We've got a new quarterback in for Carroll, Sante Batiste. He'll pitch it, and T.K. Davis has nowhere to go. And Lugard. Lugard and Dillon in the backfield. And uh, it's, it's just tough. The, the, the Carroll Lions have, have been going in the wrong direction here on offense here in the first quarter. We've got four and a half minutes to go. And I, I wonder if Arnold got a little dinged up on that last series. I don't see him even close to the offensive coaches right now. Yeah, we'll keep our eye on that. Second and long. Swing pass out. Lugard almost catches it. He gets his paws on it. They were looking to swing that pass out. I believe to Cam. Cam Williams. That's his length. I mean, again, we we're talking about it. I mean, it, it, it makes a big difference on a football field. Look at this. He's getting engaged right there, and he just puts that long arm that's, up. That's the basketball player. Uh, I mean, most of the time you look at a, at a quarterback say, you've got to be a better athlete than that guy. But when that guy is the biggest thing you've ever seen on the end of the line and has a reach like that, I mean, I don't know how you I don't know how you throw around it. It's a great idea, though, for the lines to use, use the, the pass rush of the Mustangs against him a little bit and, and get Cam Williams in some space. But you got to clear the, the great wall of Lugard first. <laughs> Third and 15, Lugard there he is gets it, and he, he knocks that pass oh. down. It's almost unfair. Asante, he, came up he stood in there. Carroll just not able to find and I believe Asante is a all. freshman, T. He's class of 27. Like, that's, that's, and it, I'll tell you what, he looks good for a freshman quarterback in this league. Just get, that, just get that, another couple that's seconds. An unenviable position to be in. Yep. As a freshman. And Look by the way, T, I, like that. I got Arnold Key Jamble walking around on the sidelines, you know, picking up his, his teammates. Good snap. Punts away. Good punt. It's going to get a Carroll bounce. It's going to get a lot of Carroll bounces. Well, they need every break they can get right now. Try to. Back this Mustang offense up, keep them out of the end zone because you do not want to go down three scores hey, and if you're, in the first quarter. If you're, you know, Coach Quick and, and the, uh, the the lines, the coaching staff, you, you tell yourself the McNamara offense really hasn't hasn't gotten you. You know, they, bo both of these scores by the they, by they, the Mustangs have been they have roughly ten yards. 
it's it's so, so you, you total off. It's you execute the punt. <laughs> you know, you get the snap and you get the punt away and you get your defense on the field. Uh, you you got to think to yourself. You know, it's 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 one step at a time. Yeah, McNamara's offense has to sh has to show him. Charles Fortin, tough run inside. Probably the best run of the day. And that's Arnold Arnold Key Jamble, the, the quarterback, the tackling beast, bringing the the, the uh, thunder from Canada down. It's going to be second in about five. There's Arnold out there as the as the linebacker. Oh yeah. Maybe they're they're just giving him you know some fresh legs because they need him on de on defense more right now. Yeah, he's a stud. He's he's now the, here he is here again. He is. We got a flag. Uh. Minus, I don't Again, know. I don't we know. couldn't he see the sidelines. Yeah, it was. He was in play. You never know if they got a face mask or something. We'll see what they call. I, don't know. I might get a. I might get a call from the, the ref's wife here if I if I keep disagreeing <laughs> with their calls. No offense. Not. It's not personal. It's it's not, just, well, no, it was no. personal foul. <laughs> just a little, just a personal. That part was personal. That was personal. I'm not being personal. We're not taking it personal. Fifteen yards. And, and, and again, 15 yards for an offense. You know, again, as a defense, you you, you had you had McNamara in a third down situation. Yeah. Uh, and, you, and you let him off. So uh, we got a pass. He wants it all. He's going deep. He's got a man. And I'll tell you what, that was all, oh, that was really man. good coverage. I don't know. I mean, you got to let some hand finding. There was just as much on the offensive side as there was on the defense. Bryson Shelton for McNamara, covered by Demille Bostic. Yeah, we had we had front row seats to that one, and we got holding. I don't know. Do you disagree I think with we me? got. No, no, I didn't like the off uh, the pass interference call. It's going to be an offsetting foul though, because we had holding on the Mustangs. Oh, it's a do over. So we get a. We're going to get a do over because I. It's always yeah because both of those penalties occurred during the play. It'll be first and ten. I didn't like the pass interference call. No, I like the do over. The do over's better. Yeah, do over's better. No, Demille Bostic is. You, if you you watch him play, he's he knows what he's doing. He's doing just fine out there. I mean, it's not any contact is is an interference call. It has to it has pitch to out to Fort, and he's got some space, and he sheds the first tackler. And he gets around the corner, and he's brought down at about the twenty-five yard line. Actually, they're going to call him out at the thirty. That's the first big run of the day. For the French Canadian, I wonder. I wonder if he talks trash in French on the field. That's gonna be. We have to. We have to learn that. We. Oui. We. Oui, we. Oui. That's that's the extent of my French, by the way. I had bonjour. I'm sorry. I can say. Yeah, bonjour. don't forget bonjour. Yeah. And I can sing Frere Jacques, but you don't want me to. We prefer you didn't. <laughs> First and ten. Mustangs at the Carroll thirty. Up 13 points with three to go in the first. They're going deep to Lugard. And, it, and another play with great coverage by Bostic. Now that was a heck of a play by Bostic. Yeah. He's given up. Uh, we don't have. I mean, he's Carol's six foot. Numbers, Dem Demille's, Demille's a, a, a six foot in the program, so he's given up at least you know seven or eight inches uh, to the big man uh, off the hardwood. I mean, and, and Bostic was there, and, and he he uh, he made the play. But to your point, Kev, probably you could probably take that. What did I, I said I said Kev, didn't I? <laughs> to your point, you you could probably make attempt that play at, at will. And here's a swing pass out. And what a hit! A play ender. T.J. Uh, Chandler. Zach Butler. <laughs> yeah, that's right. T.J. Chambliss, and he got met. Nice by little Daniel one, Williams. Nice little ri running back screen. He had a couple blockers out in front of him. They pick up a huge first down. But to you said it, they weren't having a lot of luck inside. And we see it, uh, you no, know. I think they got to do more of that. Get the ball outside quickly. Or outside be, the hash. It would behoove them to do more of that. We're all about behooving. There's the pitch to Charles Fort, and he bobbles it. And he'll be dropped for a Williams. loss. And it'll be second and about 13. Williams and Marbury getting a tackle for loss. Yeah, they sniffed that one out right away. It's just, there's a lot of speed on the field. 
Speed to the edge on, on uh, that Caroline's defense. And they're right at about the, the distance for McNamara's kicker. That's about as far as he can kick when it would be about a 38-yarder right now. I think we're going to get a false start by Lugard. Mm. Number eight, that'll back up the Mustang offense some more, call it maybe a second and 18. And here's why I bring th that point up. Now they are going to be outside of field goal range. So again, Carroll positioning themselves to be able to make a big play that goes in their favor. They've got to tighten it up here at second and 20. It's about maybe second and 19. Miguel. Probably four down territory for him at this point. Miguel works to his right. He's going to keep it, and he is dropped, and that'll be a loss. It'll be third and longer for the Mustang offense. Yeah, we were watching. We always watch the kickers when they're lining up uh, kicks in the, in the pregame to get a sense of, of, of distance, and bo both uh, kickers for McNamara were getting it between tapped the uprights. Out. Tapped out at about 38, 39. Yeah, right, right inside that 40-yard 40, 40 number. It looked like a comfort level. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're sitting just on the outside of that here as uh, running back Lawrence Washington checks in for McNamara. we got a timeout on the field for McNamara as they will talk about this. And, and T, I got I to tell you, so you got 13-point lead with under a minute to go in the first, and uh, there's not a whole lot of third and 20 plays, but if you can get yourself seven or eight yards and give your kicker a chance... You, you, th those are valuable points. Yeah, no, if you're Miguel right now and, the, you, and you're the coach, you're telling him, listen, you don't have to go for it all here. That's right. right. Just we'll be okay if you can get it, you know, within field goal range. We're up 13 nothing, padding on an, another three points or having an opportunity to pad on three more points is much better than trying to go for it all, not making it work, and now you have, a, you have to make the decision to go for it on fourth down in, 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 in forever as opposed to, you know, if you get it close enough, maybe you do decide to go for it on fourth down and, and try to pick up the first down. Because you're up 13 nothing right now and you're kind of in control of the game, or you can make that field goal and pad your, pad your lead a little bit. Lions have been pushing McNamara around on this drive. Knocked him back was, considerably, and so they got a little bit of confidence coming in. If I was Carroll, I'd bring the, I would you, bring the heat This is right the blitz. Here. This is the, whatever blitz you got. Because, you know, they, the, the more you lay back, the more you give them an opportunity to at least get in the field goal range. You bring the heat, which they're not showing right now. Three down linemen, and they're going to bring three and guard the rest. And I tell you what, they're getting pressure from three. Miguel, and he's going to pass. It's going to go right through the hands. Wow. Look like Mason Samuels out there on the outside, if I'm not mistaken. How about that push from the first three? I mean, they, they, they did not have to bring the blitz to get them out there. And they had an opportunity to make a pretty good play and, and, and put themselves in position to maybe kick it. But now, forced with four and fourth and about 19. They're gonna, they got to go for it because yeah, I don't think they can kick it. No, they're not bringing in the kicker, and that was Gabriel or Huanga. Or Huanga. I mean, the guy just <laughs> absolutely blew up. The McNamara inside uh, lineman. He almost made like a TJ Watt, you know, uh, Bosa type sack. He was almost sacked the quarterback right, while he was good. being blocked. He's quick off the ball, too. Miguel going to the back of the end zone. Another pass to Lugard up high, and that's picked off. That ball is that picked, is picked off. off. Yep. DeMille Bostic comes down with it. He gets a foot in, and it'll be Carroll Ball. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, you know, we don't want to tell DeMille Bostic this because the interceptions are fun. But they would have had better field position if he didn't catch it. But it, you, you always intercepted, right? Uh, <laughs> it's a gray area. It's a gray it's area. Tough. You want to you get the stat. You want to you be able to, to tell Edipoye, hey, man, I got one on you. You know, I got to be able to tell Miguel, I got one on you. I know Kevin Ricca doesn't let a day go by to, to not remind me he got one on me. So. Yeah, well, you know, he's he doesn't remember a lot of things, but he does remember that. Carroll offense, and then we're going to get a, okay, we got uh, Asante, Batiste. They've got to be keeping Arnold fre more fresh for defense right now. Under center, handoff, inside give, and it'll be a short gain. I mean, a half a yard as TK Davis for the Lions. Really impressed with the defensive lines for both teams and, and, and the amount of impact they're having on this game right now. 
I believe that's going to do it here for the first quarter as Carroll looks like they're content to let to let the uh, clock wind down. And that'll do it after one quarter of play. Homecoming at Bishop McNamara High School. Forceville, Maryland, McNamara 13, Archbishop Carroll 0. We're going to take this opportunity to bring on a very special guest, the quarterback of the 1973 city title team, but perhaps more importantly, my religion teacher from my days here at Bishop McNamara, Mr. Andy Turner. Thank you so much for, for uh, coming on with us today. Oh, you're welcome. I appreciate the honor of being here and uh, enjoying the football game here today. So, uh, Mr. Turner, as we call, as I'll call you to <laughs> forever, uh, I want to point out that you're still in the league teaching. You're down on I Street at Gonzaga. Yes. Uh, we've got a lot of brothers uh, who've, who've come out of that fine institution, and uh, I know you're carrying on the legacy of, of uh, teaching all the th I, I, I don't even know what story to start with, but how about this? Uh, talk to me a little bit about seeing the guys, you know, the 19, your, your teammates. Uh, I, even when I was here and ever since, the 1973 team uh, is legendary to us, uh, the Mustang community. And uh, so you, you, the guys are in there. I saw some pictures of some people that were being held. I mean, how, what was it like uh, kind of being back together with them? Oh, it was fantastic. We uh, got together last night uh, and had a wonderful meal. And, uh, for many of us, we hadn't seen each other since, uh, you know, playing days. And, um, Getting together was fantastic, and uh, reliving a lot of the old memories uh, was precious. Um, I don't know if people knew this, but it was our first year in the Catholic League, uh, 1973, and we knew we had a good group of guys, and um, we were dedicated, worked hard, and um, ended up going undefeated and um, got to play in the city championship game at RFK Stadium and beat Anacostia. So uh, just a ton of fabulous memories with some great guys. And I'm um, just very thankful that um, we were able to get together uh, today and yesterday. Well, it's it's great to have you back on campus. It's great to be back on campus. It looks great. Fantastic. It's it's such a great atmosphere. Uh, and, and, of course, uh, you know, the home team, uh, after one quarter of play, tell me a little bit about what you saw in the first quarter from, from the, the Lions and the Mustangs. Well, the game's changed a lot since. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, we um, were the old uh, – you know, run the ball uh, three yards in a cloud of dust, and it was literally a dusty football field we played on back then. So now we see kids flying all over the field, a lot of passing and uh, turf field. So you know, it's changed, and um, but it's impressive, uh, a lot of fun to watch. And um, McNamara's you know, on a nice ride, uh, five and zero, and um, looking pretty good here in the first half. We're not talking leather helmet era, though. <laughs> no, not that far back, thank God. <laughs> Incomplete pass out to the left side. They were looking for Deshaun Williams, the freshman wideout. It'll bring up, uh, I believe, fourth down for, yeah. for Carroll. And the, their offense, they'll be continue to try some things. You know, uh, Mr. Turner, we're talking about the uh, McNamara, the, the two defenses. I mean, McNamara obviously was able to, to move the ball a little bit on offense that last, last drive of the first quarter. But for the most part, if you're coaching over on the Carroll sideline, you've got to be thinking to yourself, we've done a good job. With the McNamara off against the McNamara offense, it's really the mistakes by the by the Carroll Lions right. that cost them so big over here in the end zone with the with the uh, bad snap on the pun and, and the fumble with the scoop and score. Yeah, yeah a couple of penalties hurt as well. But, uh, they're hanging in there. Maybe uh, they can get it together in the second half. So I, I assume uh, uh, at Gonzaga this week they'll be honoring the McNamara '73 city title team uh, <laughs> all week on I Street. Uh, they will. Uh, in my, <laughs> only in my classroom though. I love it. I <laughs> and love at the it. lunch table, I like to brag about it uh, every now and then to uh, some of my colleagues who played on some championship teams at Gonzaga. So. Uh, Anyway, we like to level the playing field, so to speak. And uh, tell me about the farm. The farm's going well. Yep. Um, I no longer raise produce and sell it uh, at farmers markets. It's just uh, a small garden, and um, we uh, put uh, 40 acres into hay. So uh, my brother-in-law raises the hay crop for the uh, uh, 40 cattle. acres is a garden. Well, it used to be. Uh, <laughs> we uh, had a truck farm and uh, sold uh, tons of produce every summer. Uh, at the farmers markets here in DC. I make sure everyone knows that I was uh, a farm hand <laughs> and the worst farm. I didn't know. I didn't know what I was doing. You were just trying to get a better grade in religion. Is what well, you're doing. It wasn't working. <laughs> it wasn't working. I didn't have what it took. 
uh, in that heat picking tomatoes. I was a tomato picker. That's right. And I was not a good tomato picker. <laughs> uh, but but it was it, uh, everything about. Uh, I just want to tell you, Mr. Turner, how much you know you, you continue to mean to the to the to the guys you taught. I, I'm sure it's the same for the Gonzaga folks as well. Um, I tell my son, who's now at St. John's. Uh, stories about sitting in your class. You're still the only teacher that ever gave me detention, <laughs> which we won't. We don't have to go all, all the way down there. Um, and uh, the uh, really, to me, I, I, I got to take you when we were still an all guys school, and it was a little bit of a different environment. And I know they're getting it at, at Gonzaga with you now, but um, the ability to, you know, w when it was all guys, it was great. When, when we went co-ed and the Lorraine girls came over, what a great atmosphere. Uh, we got the Lorraine Science and Tech Center here now. It's such a testament. Uh, to the things that the the the, the nuns and and the, yes. the the fine people who ran that amazing institution where my mom graduated, right? Uh, so everything has come together in such an amazing way here on campus. Um, but it, it you know for me, sitting in your class, it, it still rings true. Uh, it, it still is, is super meaningful, and I, and I, I, uh, I want to thank you and on behalf of so many guys who had the chance to sit sit in that classroom. Uh, well, you're welcome. It's, uh, it's quite an honor to uh, continue to be teaching and. Um, Zag has been fantastic, but uh, I'll never forget uh, my 17 years here at um, McNamara. How do I have more silver hairs than you, by the way? That's well, not fair. That's that is that, That's amazing. He, he prays a lot more than you do. He prays a lot more. I mean, <laughs> I don't know, but it's 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 something. As we see the McNamara offense back at work, we got second and short here. There's Nainoa and Charles Fortin lining up in the backfield with three wide to the right. Let's see what... what uh, Coach Calhoun draws up, and this is the big man, Fortin, up the middle. Mm. Now, you, you look, I mean, you watch the way Charles runs. He's, he is a bruiser. Uh, he brings the pain, but those, I'll tell you, those Carroll linebackers. Uh, Jerem Perry, I mean, just <laughs> laid the wood. Yes. I mean, to think they're going to be doing this for four quarters, a lot of these guys going two ways, and there's Charles again. And he turns it upfield on a cutback, puts his foot in the turf. And he's going to have a gainer here for the Mustangs. And that's going to be, I believe they're going to give him another first down. Move the chains again. And now the Mustangs are on the move. 11 minutes to go here in the first half. And they're going to feed him. And it's going to be a team tackle. Bringing the big guy down from Canada, Mr. Turner. That is, uh, he's got the shirt on underneath that says, I'm big in Canada. Oh, wow. And uh, he, he, we we're wondering if he talks trash in French. We're pretty sure he, <laughs> that he does. Uh, but we'll see uh, if, if Coach Calhoun, if this is going to be an all Fortin drive. And so far it is. And this time, he'll be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. There's only so, much, so many times in a row, and that was... We talk about number eight, Arnold Key Jambel for, for uh, Carroll. The guy led PG County in tackles last year, Mr. Turner. Oh. He shows up to Carroll, and they realize the guy's got a gun uh, attached to his uh, shoulder. And so they, they, he's not, he was, he'd been their, their quarterback this year. they got a couple other kids who can, who can sling it as well. Wow. Uh, but number eight is a player uh, down there on Harewood. What did you, when you played Carroll, was that down on uh, Turkey Thicket? Or did, did Actually, we played Carroll. It was the last game of the season. Uh, McNamara with a breakaway. That's a touchdown wow. as Lawrence Washington scoots around the left side. And that's the big, the first big play from this McNamara Mustangs offense. Mr. Turner, where, where was that you said they played? Uh, we ended up um, playing Carroll at McNamara. It was the last game of the regular season. Uh, both teams were undefeated, so a big game. Moss oh, wow. was a legendary Moss. Carroll coach at the time. Sure. And, um, it was brutally cold um, that uh, late uh, November day, and um, we uh, ended up winning 14-6, I think. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, and then that uh, enabled us to play in a city championship game um, against the Anacostia. As we're getting ready to watch the, uh, the extra point here, uh, just talking, you, you mentioned Coach Moss Collins, mm -hmm. right? You've been a part of this conference for a very long time in, in several different roles. Just talk about your, your involvement and why you're still involved in this conference and, and with these, these, these schools. Um, I'd love to. I, I was born in D.C. actually at the old Sydney Hospital a block and a half from Gonzaga. And um, so I'm a native, and um, I grew up uh, with the Catholic parochial school, St. Phillips, Camp Springs, and in my neighborhood, I had older kids um, going to Gonzaga, to Matha, St. John's, Carroll, and then when I got a little older, uh, McNamara opened up, so it was a new kid on the block, so to speak, and um, I ended up going there because it was closer and convenient. But anyway, um, 
I just love, I had a passion for the Catholic League and the schools, Moss College with football. We had Joe Gallagher with football and basketball. I of course, Morgan over at Damatha with his uh, legacy. Um, and, and I had a lot of friends playing at Damatha. So it was just, it was just, I don't know. I, I can't, I don't have the time to go into just my, my <laughs> love for this league. And um, I don't know if Tim realizes this, but I actually taught one year at Damatha uh, before I uh, ended up at, at Gonzaga. So I got to know Bill McGregor and his uh, staff very well, and um, I was privileged to teach some fine young men and get to know the uh, inner workings of the Napa High School, uh, which was a joy. Um, John Moreland was just an outstanding um, headmaster or principal to work for. Um, but Shout out and, to Tommy Ponton. Oh, Ponton, great guy, <laughs> yeah. And uh, Dan McMahon, the current um, um, principal, uh, he and I worked together. Um, just some wonderful people. But uh, the league itself was just, um, I don't know, it's sort of like on the college level, the Big Ten just has so much rich tradition. And um, when McNamara joined the league our very first year, I was a senior, it was just like, wow, you know, um, we're a part of something really special and uh, something as a kid I always wanted to be a part of. So it, it, it happened. And, uh, and then we had that magical season. But my dad uh, graduated in 71, talked about that field. You said it was cold. Uh, there was the, it was a very unforgiving ash field, and, and it was pretty much no grass by what, like mid September, early <laughs> September. It was the grass was gone. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, just marching up and down the middle of the field. So, uh, well, well, Mr. Turner, thank you so much for your time, and thank you so much for everything that you do. First, and for and for your love of this conference, because that's what, that, and that's why we're here. Yeah. Uh, we're missing our brother in action today, uh, Kevin Ricca. He's he's coaching a uh, 13 and under. Uh, you know, group, and so um, you know the. He's St. John's, and that's the only place you haven't had any influence. So you go ahead. And <laughs> you can. I'm smart. <laughs> I'm, I avoid the uh, the cadets there. <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you guys for what you do. We really enjoy it, and your dedication to the conference is greatly appreciated by thousands of Washingtonians. God bless. And we'll be there for the St. John's Gonzaga game on I Street to close the season out. So we'll That'll look forward to seeing you fun. there. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Turner. You're welcome. Bye bye. Thank you. Good to see you. All right, love you, man. Mr. Turner, gosh, if, uh, I know there's a lot of McNamara alums out there remembering sitting in that class. No, not you talk about a no-nonsense guy uh, who's beloved for being a no-nonsense guy. And and uh, at the end of the day, um, there was it, it, you know you know when you have that mix of somebody who's you know quote unquote no nonsense, but everything he does makes you laugh. Yeah, uh, I can see it exactly. And 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 you don't you don't escape without learning something. Uh, and that, and he, he's a representative of so many teachers in this conference and the coaches. Uh, and, and he was a, he's, he has been a fine coach. In fact, one of the, I don't think he's ever lost a, a coach in football in this league at the freshman level. But so many of the coaches we talk about, everything starts and ends with these teachers and these coaches. Uh, and it doesn't get any better as the, the Carolines go to work. And that's a great grab. Darren Williams on the grab. Man, he, he reached his arms out and got a hold of that. There he is, Darrell Williams. First nice down for the Lions. Play. Again, it was a quick, get it out of the quarterback's hands, get it in the hands of a playmaker, and get some positive yardage. Again, nice pass. And and he's got, got some room it. to run. Get the ball in the hands of guys hey. like Demil Bostic. Just, just, just one little bit of success, though, right? I mean, it gets, gives the quarterback a little confidence. You know, it, it, it gives the team a little bit of confidence. Now they've got two positive uh, plays back to back, and they got a little bit of a drive moving here. Arnold swinging out again, and it's going to come just a little short of the intended receiver, Darnell Williams. Carroll's offense right now sees an opportunity to do a little over under in the in the flat out here, and the quarterback just you know gets to see it develop, and then he's going to the flat right now uh, because the, the 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 guy on the outside is clearing it out, and it's opening up a you know a good window for the quarterback and the receiver to connect. They just weren't able to connect on that last one. Second and ten, eight and a half minutes to go in the first half. The Mustangs, 20-0 lead. 
We hope everybody was okay with a little diversion there, a little extra content from a member of a really a hallowed team here at McNamara. It's Arnold looking to throw, and he's going to pitch it out. And I'll tell oh, you what, that that's underhand. a forward pass. He threw it underhanded, but it was still a forward pass, right? It was a forward pass. He threw it underhanded. It went forward. There was a receiver in the area. I'm interested to see I'm not what sure the penalty is. What the penalty is? He's, it looks like there's an ineligible player downfield. We'll see what they call it. He gave, he did, he gave this one to the the. Uh, oh, that would be a clip, I think. Okay. Like block in the back or something. We'll see. All right, we're waiting on the signal from the referee. And it's going to go against Carroll. Ineligible receiver downfield is the signal he gave. I thought so. We'll see. They're going to march him back and see. It looks like uh, that's going to be 10 yard backup here for the Lions. And that, you know, as they set up here third and long, both of these offenses have put themselves in some incredibly difficult situations. And I know Coach Quick, he talks about, he talked about the joy of being an offensive coordinator, drawing up offenses and calling plays. Coach Calhoun, all the way from Alabama, bringing his offensive stylings. He just, third and 20, there just ain't a lot of, of, no. of, of plays that, that are. There's no magical plays. Yeah. <laughs> Arnold in the backfield. He's got four wide receivers. He's going to get it out quick. What a pass. What a catch. Cam Williams. And that's a big gainer. It's going to bring up fourth down, and I'm going to call it about fourth and seven or eight, maybe. I mean, that, that was. Yeah, but it's manageable now. I mean, what a great play to give yourself an opportunity to move the sticks. Quick snap. Now, they, did, they were not set on the line. I don't, uh, Arnold didn't look over to his right as the wide receivers weren't set. I believe they're going to get a, uh, they're going to, yeah, yeah, false start, motion, all of it. And that's a killer because uh, at fourth and six. You know, well, he was done with some confidence right now to his receivers. This is what Coach Quick was talking about when he says, you know, he had to take over in July and get things going. He, he, he was behind the ball, right? I mean, things like this, you're going to see some sloppiness, you know, I guess, just because he hasn't been able to fully put his whole, his whole, you know, playbook together. His, it, 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 he says, we're just hitting a groove now, meaning, you know, it takes a while to, to, to work together to you know, get that cohesion and, I think that Carroll, because they started so late with the change at the helm, that you know there's still some kinks that they're working out. It's just unfortunate that in this game, some of the mistakes that they're making have cost them huge, which is why they're down 20 to nothing right now. I just, you just can't help. I know if if uh, Kevin was here, he would be marveling as well when you see number eight on defense for Carroll laying the wood, and then showing up to play quarterback on the offensive side, and and he's putting the ball. On the spot, and here he is again, right down the middle of the field, and that ball is picked off. Demil Bostic didn't turn around to look. Now he was running free down the seam, and, and Arnold saw that. Uh, Bostic never turned his head, and the ball fell in to the arms. I thought that was uh, Isaiah Washington, but it wasn't. I didn't get the number on that. What a play! Let's see, I don't know if we can get a replay on that, but but uh, wow, big turnover. Yeah, he tried to go to the seam, but you know McNamara sort of staying home this time and breaking on the ball with a good break. The ball just fell a little short, and McNamara able to get the ball and turn over Downs. And that's a big, a, a big turnover too because Carroll was moving the ball. They were, they were, they they had their first success on offense. They're getting they the ball learn, out of his hands quick. They need to learn what was being successful and go back to it the next time they had the ball. Miguel with a handoff, turn up the middle, and there's KJ. I mean, excuse me, right away. Wrapping up the ball carrier. How many, corner, how many quarterbacks are you going to see make a tackle like that? <laughs> just got a Mustang player on the field. I mean, zero? Team one? One that I, mean, I know I, of. I played quarterback, I played quarterback and, and, and middle linebacker in, in youth ball. 
But that was youth ball. This is uh, this is big boy ball, and and for him to be able to do that, uh, absolutely tremendous athlete. Tough. It's fun. Tough athlete. It's so fun. Think about how angry you get playing quarterback, and you just got to stand there and take the hits from the defenders, and to be able to have that outlet to turn around and play middle linebacker on the next series and let it go. You know how much I would have given to be able to play defense after <laughs> I throw a pick? There, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Get a, uh, a look at the injured player for the Mustangs. Can't get a number. It looks like maybe Bryson Shelton walking under his own power off the field, and that's good. And it'll be second and seven as Lawrence Washington on that last play was able to scoot forward for some Mustang yardage. Now Noah waits the snap. Handoff again up the middle goes Lawrence Washington. Another gainer is going to bring up third and short. And McNamara has gone to the run game here. Yeah, they want to eat a little bit of clock. In the second you quarter, the, you got the lead. You want to eat up some clock. You want to see that 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 time just tick away because you've got a very comfortable lead at this point. Oh, <laughs> Two yards to go here to get a first down. Again, with the give. Ooh. I don't think. That's going to be close. I don't know that he got they it. He may give it to him. Yep. They, they're giving him the signal. He just, just snuck barely. over the line to gain. And that, that's that's just been the day for Carroll right now. Oh, they're just oh, barely, like, you know, they, 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 they start getting a little momentum on offense and just couldn't get it done. And right here, they have almost were able to stop McNamara, and they just couldn't get it done. You talk about a game of inches. Lawrence Carroll's learning Washington. a hard lesson in that today. Charles Fortin back in, and he'll get the carry. He's going to push it out to the left. And Ronald Burke gets his hands on him. All right, there you go. You, you win first down as a defense. You get them off, off schedule just a little bit. Can they hold on here? Jerry and Barry, Aaron Marbury, they all got a piece of that one. Second and eight. To throw, Miguel, he's got a man out wide and it's Broken up. Cam Williams, I believe. <laughs> Intended receiver. Looked like Mason Samuels on the outside. And that'll bring up third down and long here. Third and nine, though, a lot better than third and 20. Let's see what Miguel can put together here. Miguel with a keeper, he points up field, and he'll get dropped for after a short gain, and it will be fourth down. And there, that time, Carroll finally able to sort of, you know, put some punctuation at the end of it and hold them off. It looks like they may go for this on fourth down, though. They're keeping they? the offense on the field. It's they fourth are. and about four yards. I, I, well, I, this is risky only because if you no, don't make it, okay, now nah, the down the the, the, the uh, guy go. holding the stick was showing a three. Then they showed a four. They got to the right formation. Now I'll tell you what, there's no punter. There's no punter. Where's the, okay, there we go. Interesting. Play bold strategy, <laughs> Cotton. <laughs> they faked us out. I knew, I knew this play clock was gonna come into play. That's gonna be a delay of game. It was the most entertaining delay of game. I don't think we were. I've ever had. Expecting that. <laughs> All right, 
Right, you give Carroll a little bit of a break there. Cam Williams on his side of the 50, right around the 40, 41 yard line. We'll see what kind of foot Keontae Glenn can get on this. Ooh, Carroll almost, gets in the backfield. They might have gotten a piece, got of that, a piece of that. But that ball is going to run Mustang way and settle just near that 30 yard line. It's the Carroll offense will go to work. ball out of the hands of the quarterback quick fast in a hurry like they did on the last drive Sasante handoff inside give Bostic and a gainer I think that was TK Sano, Davis yeah, you're right you're right Second down. they go back at it again Not as much success that last time. Brings up third and short, though. And, you know, you can see what Coach Quick has been trying to do here on the last series of offensive plays, last drive into this drive. A little more purpose, both quarterbacks executing. Asante looking to throw. Out to his left. And that is a great catch. I think that's Cam Williams on the outside. That'll be a first down for the Carroll Lions. That pass re reminiscent of uh, another guy who used to be in town here, Taylor Heineke. Asante just doesn't, as a freshman, doesn't have the ability to whip it out there, but you see he's got the good footsteps. He's got a pretty good motion. And with age and, and getting into the weight room, that ball is going to come out with a little bit more fire but it was enough to get a first down there. He's also getting coached up by someone near and dear to the oh, league's yeah. heart. Flag down, the freshman pumps, and he puts it in the air, and there's, I mean, I, once again, it's like a t-shirt gun loaded with flags <laughs> uh, on this play. I, 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 we'll see how they sort this one out. Yeah, well, you referenced it. Al Clark, the uh, yep. 1992 season all met stole it from me at least I, I'm allowed to say that yeah, yeah. I, I have the microphone he doesn't that's right but he is back at his alma mater uh, he looks Al great Clark green. And I went we went we went head to head back in the day but uh, what a great player went on to Virginia Tech had a great career there played in arena ball um, quite a bit and has become a good friend of mine he and I didn't know each other at all back in high school we didn't want to talk to each other back then but uh, it's great to become good friends with him uh, now when we get to talk about you know, back in the day, but he's doing a great job of mentoring uh, these these uh, these quarterbacks, and uh, they're going to benefit from it from a guy who's been through so much and had a, had such a stellar career himself. Might as well talk about our other good buddy, Kevin Lewis. That's right. Who was Naval on Academy the same, on the same '92 team went to the Naval Academy. Uh, safety. He's helping out on the defense. It's just great to see the alum too come back to their honors and be a part of this of it all. Quarterback moving to his right, throwing back to his left. Ball carrier drop quick, fast, and in a hurry by Jalen Higginbotham. That's, now that's a name. Well, I'll tell you what, that's, that's a game. Have, have called out. They were hoping, they were hoping that Jalen would, would have been uh, sleeping at the wheel there because uh, Asante ran the play. He got out quick to his right side and threw it back but there was nothing there. Asante throwing out quick there to Bostic. Go. We got a flag down. And unfortunately, I think it's gonna probably be holding. It's in the area of holding. 
Mustang on the ground. Looks like uh, Javaris Lassiter. You know, talk about those coaches. We had a chance to talk with Al Clark a couple minutes before the game, and uh, he said the only thing that really is hurting this, this Carroll team right now is the youth. They're so young. You know, they're just trying to figure out high school, much less how to play in a conference like the WCAC. So, you know, the, the mistakes I think we're seeing out here today is indicative of what Al was saying, is that this is a young team making young mistakes. You know, once they can get over that, they have, they have the talent. They have, you know, the ability to be a pretty good team. And I think Coach Quick, as he says, we're hitting our groove. They, they're they're going to have some setbacks, but they're also going to have some successes. And uh, they're just trying to find out right now, especially on the offensive side of the ball, how to capitalize on the, on, on the successes. Get, get, you know, once you get one, let's get two. And once you get two, let's get three. They just haven't been able to string those types of successes together yet. Penalty is going to be on Bishop McNamara as it looks like a legal hands to the face. And it's going to give Carroll back a lot of good yards. That helps. He's second in about five. Uh, but the thing about the other thing about Carroll, you talk about the inexperience and the youth, and Al talked about it. They got a lot of freshmen, a lot of sophomores on that squad. They've only played three games. Yeah. Uh, you know, McNamara, this is McNamara's sixth <laughs> game. Uh, so many teams, you know, you get, you, you're basically in October. Uh, a lot of these guys start up in, in late August. Uh, you're looking at at least four or five games for most teams. So Carroll, a bit of a disadvantage. We've had some terrible weather. Uh, McNamara got bit a little bit by that. They, I think they had a game, uh, Riverdale Baptist, that was real weird. Uh, it was funny talking to Coach Calhoun about that tee. They came out, both teams got one series on Saturday. They finished the game on Sunday, and he said it was obvious that both teams went to work. Oh, they, they, like, they, he said, I've never dissected the film. They, they dissected the film of one drive, and it became like a 14-10, I believe, something 17-14, something like that, low scoring game. But he said you, you, you got the flavor of each other after one drive each, then they came back the next day and, and beat each other up. And there's the keeper, Asante. Oh. Ducks the hit from Dylan Newman. I thought maybe there's a personal foul going to come at the end of that, but they yeah they didn't. First down nice for Carroll play. as the sun comes out. We got some clouds in the sky, but I'm I'm not predicting any rain. Personally, anyways, I don't know about real deal seal ball in the air, and that's a 50-50 ball. And looks like the McMurray Mustangs got there's it. There's a flag on the field. There is a flag on the field. Jalen Higginbotham having a series. Now we're going to see what the what the call is. But that ball was put in the air. It's going to be a pass interference, but I don't know if it's going to be against offense or defense. Everyone's waiting with bated breath. On the and defense. And it's going to be pass interference on the defense. Wow. <laughs> and Higginbotham is distraught. And the Lions. Really, you know, they've been moving the ball and they've been getting benefit of some uh, big mistakes here uh, by the by the Mustang defense. Well, they needed it, and, and they need, they're going to need some points to get on the board here. They do not have the ball coming out of the uh, the, the break. It's going to be McNamara's ball, so that's how it's even more important for Carroll to somehow come out of this drive, or at least maybe milk the rest of this 135 off and come out with some points going into halftime. One and a half minutes to go here. Asante, we're gonna throw a flag thrown right away. That ball is oh. loose. And it looks like it's gonna be covered up by a gold helmet. Who is that that, that jumped on it? 53 for Carroll. Makai Moore. What heads up play by Junior. Makai Moore. And we'll see what the flag is. That, that flag came out at the snap. Again, see, Kevin, I mean, Ken, it's, it's, it's going to be it's, against like Carroll. Carroll's got, they got some momentum, right? They get, they're getting it going, and then they just come up short. They, they you know, a, a hiccup here, a, you know, a mistake there throws them off, and they're just not able to capitalize on it. Now, this isn't a huge mistake. It's going to be first and 15, so it's manageable. And you get. But they can't afford any more mistakes here. Arnold back in the game for the Lions. As the middle linebacker got a little bit of a blow. That ball's going to be oh intercepted out of the air. Going back the other way is Gianna, Gianna Davis. Davis. Oh. And he's going to be chased. And I think he's going to be brought down by TK Davis. Does that go down as one of the worst broadcaster jinxes, jinxes of all time? I mean, uh, right when they, they absolutely could not afford. Gianni a Davis, mistake. a name Coach Calhoun gave us this week. Someone to watch. The, so, the sophomore, and I tell you what. Wow. 
he put his hands on that ball, and it was, it was, it was a no-doubter as he went, went back the other day. Awesome hustle play by T.K. Davis, the sophomore running back for Carroll to save that touchdown. Uh, let's see here. 102 left. What a, that's a backbreaker for oh. Carroll. Just moving the ball, moving the ball. And they had the play they wanted. And once again, you, know, you, you, we, you could go back and watch that play and you could see exactly what they're trying to do. And they had to beat one guy. Uh, a couple drives ago, it was Lugard getting his hands in the way. Uh, and in that case, uh, you know, Gianni. And that was Asante that threw that. Was it Asante? Or no, that was Arnold. It was Arnold. Uh, it was, it, Asante had the opportunity to try to throw a little, you know, flare to a running back, and we saw uh, Edaboye just put that huge stretched you know, oh, yeah. six, seven frame arm out there and knock it down. Similar thing here, Arnold trying to get the ball just over the top, but just not able to get it over top enough. And, and again, a big, big mistake is going to really come back and really hurt this line all close. Similar to last week when Kevin and I were doing the St. John's Mission Viejo game. St. John's clearly in the lead. Mission Viejo sort of trying to find their, their rhythm, find their groove. Right before halftime, it looked like they were going to actually put a put a score on the board and make it a game. And and a, a late ball to the flat. St. John's, you know, able McIntyre is able to pick it off and really pile it on right before the halftime. We're seeing somewhat of a similar scenario happening today. Take a time take a quick second to shout out the Osborne family, good friend of First Amendment Sports, Quinn Osborne down at William & Mary. He's been getting it on uh, for that football team now for a few years. His brother Braylon Osborne, a gifted corner, was prop, from my understanding is he was in line this year to uh, really you know, probably make, make a mark on the conference, a six foot defensive back, uh, and, he, and he rolled an ankle last week. And we hope, we wish him a quick recovery, uh, but uh, Love, love me some Osborns here that in Forestville. Q was, was so special to watch here. Yeah, he was. He, was, he, had, he had a game, but that heart was amazing. Yeah. As Miguel dices his way in, and it looks like he, he will get a, a, a short gainer. But yeah, we remember number 35. Number 35 in the program, number one in your hearts, Quinn Osborne. Now I know in shotgun, Charles Fortin. And he's going to get dropped, and right away you see uh, Gabriel Orwanga, the tight end, outside linebacker, defensive end, the 6'1", 226-pound no senior. Man. He plays yeah, hard. These guys can tackle. Uh, yeah, it, 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 Carroll's defense for the most part has been put in a very difficult position. Done. As bad or as good as you could ask them to do, having you know a bunch of short fields, one of them being only eight yards. Yep. Um, you know, so... Carroll's defense doing what they have to do. It's on the offensive side of the ball where Carroll's going to have to regroup and figure out a way to, to pile some successes on top of successes and, and not throw themselves off with these huge mistakes that are really causing the big story in this game. 20-point lead for the Mustangs. We're about 30 seconds away from halftime. we got the homecoming court on the field getting ready to I can't wait to get to my second fish sandwich. The first one went down way too fast. There's nothing better. That's going to be my halftime. We got the fresh ones too. There's the pitch, a fake pitch. And the Noah to pass. Oh, and he had a man. I believe that was Mason Samuels. That was a nifty play, as we used to say in the 1950s and 60s. But you did, anyways, T. <laughs> I wish, I wish. Nice, nice try. <laughs> nice try. Speaking of nice tries, that was a nice try by McNamara. They're going to try to settle for three, which is absolutely fine when you're up 20. But a mini victory for the Carroll Lions. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and again, TK Davis saving at least four points through sheer hustle. You just you say that you say a kid's name over and over and over again when he makes a play like that. And McNamara's going to get a timeout called before before some chippiness happens out there. It'll remain fourth down. Coach Calhoun just telling telling his kids no nonsense. 
Excuse me. Get some. Look, they want points before this half ends, one way or another. I mean, you know, Coop Calhoun and those guys, they're not small. Look at no. how much Edipoye just towered over there. No, and it's a testament to, you know, again, two two guys uh, on opposite sidelines who are trying to build something. Uh, in both cases, they're bringing just amazing athletes to these games. The, you know, the, the difference in size on the McNamara sidelines is noticeable. Uh, you know, uh, last two or three years, especially in the last two with Coach Calhoun, you know, you've seen definitely – Bigger boys, uh, not just on the offensive and defensive line, but man, I tell you, you know, the, like you said, the way that some of these guys stretch those jerseys, defensive backs, wide receivers, running backs. Yeah, there was a point in time when you talk about, you know, the days of Al Clark and, and Kevin Lewis and Phil Savoy and, and um, Marvin, Jamal Williams and, and Dennis, uh, Desmond Dennis. I mean, these, these guys are guys that played in the league. And, you know, they had some dogs back in the day yep. and and I know they're trying so hard to get back there hopefully coach quick has an opportunity to kind of stay up there and build what he's got going on here because I know that eventually Carroll's going to get back to that that level of play well, we got a, a play here quick throw out to the right Burke Chandler. I mean that was pure you know Ben Chandler trying to ATH his way across the goal line, and uh, there was only only so many lines mm. he could get through. But it was it was a chance that McNamara could take, right? It was That's right. They, they they had the they could afford to take that chance right there, up twenty to nothing. Only sixteen seconds left on the, and they get the ball when they when they come out at halftime. So all of that went into a T. Yep. And you you again, both of these teams have guys. You know, if Coach Quick said, you know, if I can get the ball in the hands of Bostic, for example. And, and see if he can make something happen. If, if uh, Coach Calhoun says, if I can get the ball in the hands of Ben Chandler on the outside and make something happen, both of these, both of these coaches would take it. And now, you know, Carroll's got to be a little careful here. Want to get out of the shadow of the uh, goal post. And I don't, okay, they're, they're running the clock. I didn't see them start to run the clock. I guess they were able to get it. Get it on the ground, and I believe that's going to do it here in the first half at Tioka Jackson Field in Forestville, Maryland. It's homecoming for the Bishop McNamara Mustangs, and they lead 20 to nothing over the Archbishop Carolines. We will be back with second half action. We will see you then. Thank <laughs> you. 
get a big round of applause to our girls basketball WCAC champions 2008. Our next honoree, the class of 2004 girls basketball, Shantice Wright. Shantice was an All-American, as well as playing at the University of Louisville in their Final Four team. Congratulations. And our last honoree, 2009 Indoor and Outdoor Track Champion, Monica Mason, Class of 2009. Round of applause for Jaleeb Zana, the family of James Belt, class of 1999, Shantice Wright, Monica Mason, and the 2008 champion girls basketball team. Congratulations. Thank you. At this time, we are pleased to congratulate and welcome the field of members of the Bishop McNamara High School 2023 Homecoming Court. Escorted by his father, Mr. Calvin Gray Jr., please welcome class of 2027 Prince, Mr. Chase Gray. Escorted by her friends from the class of 2027, Mr. Trice, Tristan Tom Johnson and Ms. Madison Shambly. Welcome class of 2027 Princess, Ms. Sion Mackey. Escorted by his parents, Mr. Orlando Boston and Ms. Patricia Dowdle Boston. Lorraine, class of 1983, celebrating her 40th reunion with her classmates today. Please welcome class of 2026 Prince, Mr. Braden Boston. Escorted by her friends from the class of 2026, Ms. Nina Allen and her mother, Ms. Janai Pinkney. Please welcome class of 2026 Princess, Ms. Darai Counts. Escorted by his mother, Ms. Natisha Jackson, please welcome class of 2025 Prince, Mr. Joshua Ingram II. Escorted by her mother, Ms. Ursula Dogan, please welcome class of 2025 Princess, Ms. Zoe Dogan. Please welcome to the field, Ms. Denise Edopaye, representing her son from the Mustang football team, class of 2024 Homecoming King, Mr. Lugar Edopaye. Escorted by her mother, Ms. Frankie Eskridge. Please welcome the class of 2024 Homecoming Queen, Miss Bless Eskridge. Thank you to everyone who participated in the BMHS Homecoming tradition.
I'm gonna switch batteries. Give it up for your Bishop McNamara, cheers for And now, give it up for your Bishop McNamara, dance team. For their support under the direction of head coach, Danielle Williamson.
Attention, please. A Honda Civic with a Honda Civic Maryland tags six D M seven four seven, three. You must move your car, you are parked illegally. Maryland six D M seven four seven. Great. Ray Honda Sip, please move your car or you will be full. Thank you.
Thank you and welcome back. That second half of action. From Boardsville, Maryland. Homecoming Saturday for the Bishop McNamara Mustangs as they play host to the Archbishop Carroll Lions. Been, been a bit of a stingy host through one half of play T. The Mustangs are up 20 to nothing. They get back on the field. I don't know how stingy they are, so much as how generous Carroll has been. And that's, that's in their negative because they've just been coughing the ball up and making some mistakes and, and, and really providing a lot of opportunity for McNamara and, and, and hurting themselves with, with, by limiting the opportunities that they've had to put in. We have both offenses we'll stymied uh, for much of the first half. McNamara put together a, a pretty good drive there in the second quarter. Caroline's on defense have been absolute beastly uh, on that defensive front. Talking about, you know, uh, Cam Williams, uh, Ron Burke, uh, you know, uh, Aaron Marbury, and uh, making it real hard for the Mustang running game. But, they, but Coach Calhoun on the McNamara sideline stuck with that running game and started working in, you know, Lawrence Washington in there with Charles Fortin, and they were able to really move the ball uh, with uh, Nainoa Miguel under center for the Mustangs, making a, a couple timely passes. But the 20 to nothing doesn't necessarily tell the right. tale. Uh, of, of this game. It's been a lot closer than that. Uh, and, and again, uh, Carroll on offense really found some success in the late, late in the first half with quick throws and, uh, and a couple of uh, crafty runs. Yeah, I talked about this. You know, on, on offense, Carroll has shown that from time to time they can have some success. Get the ball out of the quarterback's hands quick, get it to some playmakers outside, and after that they're able to open up the running game a little bit, get a couple things going. But penalties... Uh, negative plays and turnovers have been their Achilles heel all day long. It's really been a defensive battle for, for the entire first half. The 20 nothing, as you said, Ken, not really indicative of the game that we're seeing unfolding in front of our eyes. At least six of those points you cannot put on the uh, Carroll defense because they started, uh, back there started on the eight yard line or it was first and goal on the eight after the, um, uh, the, the, me you know, the messed up punt where they couldn't get it off and it was a short field. So, uh, you know, really, I mean, on an offensive standpoint, I mean, from a defense standpoint, Carroll is doing what they have to do defensively. The onus is going to be on the offense. Can they do enough to make it enough success on offense and sustain it to put some points on the board, continue doing what they're on defense to make this a game in the second half? Both teams back on the field, ready to rock for, uh, looks like we're about 45 seconds away. From the referees getting these guys going again. McNamara gets the ball first to start the second half. We'll see what they come out of that locker room with in terms of a plan. Charles Fortin, the bruiser from Canada, wasn't always easy going for him. As big as he is and as hard as he hits, he was met in the hole quite a lot uh, by that uh, Carroll front. Him and uh, Lawrence were, were able to find some, some yards on the outside at some point. In fact, uh, Charles Fortin found some success cutting back uh, a couple times. But the, the other thing we saw, in fact, with both teams was trying as hard as they could to get that ball to the outside quickly and into the hands of guys like the Mill Boston on the Carroll sideline. Uh, you know, they were looking for 
uh, Mason Samuels uh, from McNamara Bunch on the outside, Ben Chandler for that matter, but getting it away from these big guys in yeah. the middle. Well, neither team really has had a whole lot of success running the ball today. Between the tackles, McNamara a little bit more than Carroll, and that's why both teams have had to try to open up the playbook a little bit. And to the outside, and welcome back to your second a little bit. And, um, but if you were if you're Mary, if you're Mary, coming in the second half, you're going to run the ball a lot. You're going to try to get a couple more points on the board, keep that clock rolling. Uh, and if you're Carroll, you're going to have to do a little bit more to get your playmakers on the outside and ball to the game, ball out of the backfield because Matt Lamar is doing such a great job. Military jet fly over at the point of Fly over. Try getting work done. Try, try being a high school student. Oh, I love the camera work. Being this close to the Air Force Base is always something cool happening. Always, uh. Well, that cargo plane you saw when we pulled up. They're big boys. Those are big boys. And then uh, when they have the air show, they, uh, you know, at some point they can fly, they gotta put the blinds down. I mean, you just stare out the window. There's nothing cool happening. Dog fighting in the air right above your feet on high school like that. There's just no chance to get any work done that day. McNamara is set to receive Lawrence Washington. TJ Chambliss back for the Mustangs. Here, Carroll, do you try to do the onside? Get the ball back? Catch him off guard? No. Spoil the homecoming? Nope, they're going. Going deep. Maybe. That would be TJ. And that ball's on the ground. Oh, 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 that was and it'll like stay Terry. Mustang ball. That would have been quite a turn of was, Yeah, Marbury was almost the Johnny on the spot. They were picked that up. First down. They would jump on it. Mustang throw. Wow. That would have been a huge turn of events if that had gone in Carroll's favor. And of course, you know, don't, don't want to be remiss. We didn't bring out that McNamara did have that one big running play for a, for a touchdown. It was yes. a, they had the, they had a big play strike. Well, there's 14 points, absolutely legit. Came from the offense when they, they put together a little bit of drive. You know, the punch again. That's why there's just you know maybe the scoop and score. Let's say was the six that you take away, and, and, and that's why I think Carroll's defense at least is enough to keep them in the ball game. Quick throw to the outside. Look who it is again. TJ. Mr. Carroll. Mr. Second Carroll, Ron Burke Jr. on the stop. He's everywhere, man. Another two-way player. Yeah, I'm tired watching these guys. Oh. It's only been two quarters. Watch him coming off the edge here. Another quick throw to the outside. Same play. He makes the play. Maybe it. They're going to be close short. to moving the chains. Let's see if they give them. The, they give it to them. Okay. It's first down. So two quick passes out to the outside. I mean, that's what we said right out of the gate. We said what these guys are trying to do. Yeah, Get the so ball outside clustered. the hash. So clustered in the middle there. Get it out. Spread this defense up a little bit. Hand they off. Got to respect it after a while. There's a flag. Right away. Third play of the fourth play of the half. Again, that's sort of in the area of holding. Yep. Holding her hands to the face on the defense, holding on the offense. Let's see what we got here. Holding against McNamara. It looked like, I, I, I'll let you do it. <laughs> they called 55, Jeremiah Murray. You hate to be the first time you say a guy's name. It's the nature of the, nature of the beast there. That's gonna back up the Mustangs. TJ in motion. Miguel with the snap. He'll work out to his right and he'll throw it quickly and it's into traffic and knocked away. Like Jerry and Barry is talking to his teammates. And once again, you know, McNamara's offense is up against it. You know, second and 20. Uh, it's just uh, it's difficult to operate from these distances, and both of these offenses were faced with, with this exact scenario I, honestly, all Honestly, probably the worst field position they've had all day, and Carroll's doing what they're supposed to be doing defensively right now. Yep. Miguel to throw. He steps up in the pocket, and he's gonna be on the move. He's working up the left sideline, 
And that's a big gainer. And I believe that's going to move the chains. Good poise. What, what great poise by the quarterback. You know, nothing's there. He doesn't panic. He kind of finds a lane. He decides to make the decision to go, and he goes, and he outruns one, two. And it won't defenders. be a first down. It's going to be. But referee's going to take a timeout. He's going to talk. Now the penalty on holding. We'll see what they're going to call here. It should be third down and short. All right, everybody's on the same play. Okay, we're all on the same page. They figured it out. Now McNamara wants to get the first down here on the ground with number 26 and see if yeah. they can pull it off because Carroll knows that's what they want to do as well. And a quick timeout by Coach, Qu Coach Quick. And it's an important one. This is an important third down for Carroll. I mean, extremely important to try to get this ball back early in the second half. You got a third down opportunity to get him off the field. This is not four down territory, I wouldn't think. No. From your own territory. So, good idea by Coach Quick. You know, make sure that his young men know what they need to do, know what their responsibilities are. Uh, I have a feeling, you know, everybody and their mother thinks that number 26 is probably going to get it here. So, yeah. Coach Quick is probably telling his guys, listen, you got to be disciplined. Do your gaps right here. Do your job in the middle so that they can't run it. But be aware on the outside if they're going to do another quick screen. And you're looking at number two, and number five, and number seven, and number eight. The uh, the big guys, you know, for Carroll, and Ron Burke, Jerry and Barry, Aaron Marbury, and Arnold. Uh, uh, big Arnold, uh, you know, God, he's 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 been everywhere all day today uh, in the middle of that field, and uh, they know what's coming. I think we all know what's coming. Let's see if the, if the big guys up front for McNamara can get it done. Jerry and Barry looks confident ahead of this play. Oh, he's everything coach advertised him to be. Yep. Kajambo is there, number eight. And now we're going to have a huge mistake as Lugard falls start. And that's going to back up McNamara five yards. Can't do that. Especially when you're the wide receiver, you're just supposed to be watching the ball. You're not even supposed to be listening to the count or anticipating. Oh, that's a big you see, yeah, it see if McNamara can overcome it, but it puts Carroll in a much better but situation totally, on defense. Totally changes the scenario, right? Yep. Empty backfield now. Well, no, you got Ford on his left. Okay. Quick thro uh, throw, and now he's going deep, and he's got Lugard there. No flag, good coverage. As a quarter, I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna be a little bit critical right now of Miguel, only because when you have a guy <laughs> like Edipoye, who's got the size six seven, yep. you've got to put that ball up and give him a chance. You got to give him the opportunity to get the ball, because if you put it up there. And give him the opportunity to go up high and get it. Yeah, high it's point. It's going to be most times than not. It's going to be a big play for you. He just isn't giving the play the, the, the opportunity to make a play on the ball. It's either a little too long or it's a little bit inside. Put that ball up, way up. Punt is away, and it's a good one. Fielded at the 30-yard line. And we got a flag down. It looked like he might have got a little bit of a face mask. Or, or maybe a maybe yeah. Mark Block Butler. Okay, okay. I, I couldn't tell. If it, well, yeah, you're right. No, it's a it's a block in the back. Daniel Williams, is, he's got his hands up going, what, me? <laughs> <laughs> what, me? That's I not a good anything. sign. That's not a good sign. Yeah. He may have a case, but I have yet to see a referee uh, reverse his call just because a kid puts his arms. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just got to win the debate team. I mean, yeah, yeah, everybody gives it a shot. Yeah, Every, of course. You know, I mean, the worst they can say is no, right? That's right. You, you <laughs> don't get 100% of the calls you want reversed. <laughs> reverse if you don't ask for them. Ball's going to be sitting at the 25-yard line. Caroline's looking at a 75-yard field. They're going to go with Asante to get to on the board. Off. Under center, handoff in the backfield. TK Davis. 
and not bad, you know, not 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 a huge gainer, but you know, right now Carroll's going to take any positive plays they can get. Absolutely, a good. And look at him get right back to the line Pretty of scrimmage. Good. Two yards, maybe. And this is what I like. This is what sense of urgency first and foremost. Down 20 points, but sense of purpose also as TK Davis spins through the hole. All right, not bad. Not not flashy. Not not anything special. But you've got a third in. Maybe about four now. Yeah. Because of the extra effort. And you're right back on the line of scrimmage. This is doable. This is this is what this should be a recipe for success. TK Davis again powering his oh. way through. <laughs> and that's good for a first down as he lays the wood on the McNamara defense. <laughs> TK Davis putting an exclamation point on that run. Three in a row for the young man. He's got he's, he hit him so hard he's got an equipment problem. His helmet had to come off. Yeah, that was all TK all day out of the out of the gate here for Carroll. Now, this is now we got a flag right away. Referee on the McNamara sidelines. Look at that. Okay, he's, that's another he's, warning. It's a, it's a get back warning. Now that's the second time I believe. Uh, he may be generous. Maybe he was just. No, it's a five yard penalty. Oh, it is. You're right. And it was kind of like a underarm sidewinder uh, flag throw. Let's see if we can get that on replay. He's been practicing that one. It was an undercover flag throw as Burke slices and dices his way upfield. And here's why I'm over here, way, way over here on the sideline. I said they weren't having any success between the tackles. Well, they've done something either schematically or they just fired up this Carroll team and said, we're going to go out there and just run it. Well, Old school style. Right pound. back to the line of scrimmage once again, and that's going to be another handoff to Burke. Row. And he'll be dropped at the line of scrimmage, and that is Jalen Higginbotham, who had himself a nice second quarter. An interception called back, a couple other big plays. It would be second and 10. Eh, I call it second and 11. Yeah, they're, they're going to have to go to the air here. Ooh. An aisle, maybe, maybe a, a screen. I was going to say, I, I, I'm thinking, oh yeah, a little more simpler. High percent. Quick throw, high ball, brought down yeah. by Darnell Williams. It was a high percentage throw. Yeah. But at third and eleven, it's it's not what you need. Well, yeah, that'll bring up third and third and nine, third and eight. But now it's third. Okay. Dylan Newman for McNamara got there super quick. Make sure that down is right. They have three on the down marker. Third yeah. On the down marker. Third and long. Asante in shotgun. Three-step drop. He steps up in the pocket, and he'll be dropped for a sack. And that was Javaris Lasseter. And he's been he's been shaking up a little bit today already. You can see he's, he kind of got up a little gingerly, but he's fine. I'll tell you what, we got to remember Asante is, uh, Asante Batiste is just, he's just a freshman. You know, it's, that's a lot to be asking of a freshman when, when you got a lot of pressure coming from the front four, if not the front seven. It's a luxury, too, though. And, if you and get it's a, not a knock on him. He, look, he, it's, it's a luxury if you can get him experience, you know, and get the reps. I have a feeling they may have to, you know, go back to Arnold eventually, the, the, the little bit more experienced quarterback, but I think they're really trying to keep him fresh on the defensive side of the ball right now. Good snap. Punts away. And then it'll kind of die right where it lands. First down and 10. Bishop McNamara Mustangs. Again, about a seven minutes to go here in the third quarter. So a little sloppy with the penalties here in the second half, but for the most part, both teams, you can see they, they, they came out with a, an idea of what they wanted to do. Carroll wanted to play quick and get the ball in the hands of TK and Ron and McNamara on offense, looking for Miguel to get the ball outside quickly to their wide receivers. We'll see if Lawrence Washington in the backfield now and he gets the carry. He'll work it over the left side. And he's got some room. And he'll be brought down by Cam Williams. 
Great second effort on the run. But I'm not so sure he picked up too much. Carroll really coming out, being physical on both sides of the ball here to start off the second half. Second down. Miguel in the shotgun. Quick ball out to... Now they're going to call that incomplete. Okay, I was looking for the yeah, referee to make the was, sign. It was a little... <laughs> what was it? Because it was gray, overhand. Gray area. He threw it overhand. He kind of threw it sideways, maybe a, maybe a little bit ahead of him. Enough for the, for the referee to say it was incomplete. He was a little indecisive at first, but... Yep. That's a tough position to put your uh, receiver in. Where you know you're gonna toss it three and a half yards to a guy who's about to get creamed by it looked like Aaron Marbury. This guy down Carol, from Carroll. Yeah. As a, I tell you one thing, this game has been physical. That you can tell both of these teams came here to make sure that the other team remembered that they played this game. Well, it, you're right. It was physical in the first half, but especially here in the second half, I think Carroll has come out. Sometimes your your message to players when you're down 20 nothing at halftime, it's it's not yelling at them, it's not you know berating them, it, it's firing them up and saying, hey, listen, it may be 20 or nothing, but regardless of what the score is, at the end of the game, make them feel that you were here. Yep. Don't give up on the effort. Don't give up on the physicality of the game. And, and I think that's part of the strategy right now for Carroll. Third down for the Mustangs. Ford in the backfield with Miguel. Tight end in motion. Two wideouts on either side. It's a handoff to number 26, and he's going to fight his way forward, and he's still on his feet. Great effort by Fortin. He does run hard. And it's fourth down, and he kind of, he, he certainly ran enough distance, but he ran it side to side, not north-south. Again, Carroll's defense does what they're supposed to do. And that's going to bring out the punt team is Keontae Glenn. And he's going to be punting it to Mark Butler Jr., the sophomore. He made a couple guys miss. The last time out, it comes the punt, and it's a short one, and it's going to hop. Now that's it. Uh, he couldn't do that again if he tried. No, I was going to say, I, I didn't even know how to call that. In the NFL, if you do that, the other team can grab it and run, and there can be no bad result for the He sort of had like a, volleyball, like a volleyball spike yeah, I think, combined into a basketball dribble. I think if you're going to touch it, if you're going to be, a, if you're going to touch it, they want you to, to, to possess it. You don't want to knock that ball around. It's a little different in high school than the pros, obviously but good to start early. I think stick with Asan uh, Asante Batiste. Asante stays in. TK Davis back in the backfield. It's like Micah Buch Buchanan leading the way. Mm. Stonewall. No game. Second and 10. And TK, he... he, he Fought his way back onto the field for this drive, um, but he's 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 shaking up. He'll make his way over to the sideline. Ron Burke, he'll step off the field. Robert Smith lining up the backfield to the right of the quarterback. Quick pass out. He's going to find a receiver. Makes the first guy miss. It's Sean Williams. Picks up a couple yards for Carroll. Maybe one yard. Jalen Higginbotham, one of the Mustangs in on that tackle. Third and long for the Lions. 
Yeah, Asante, again, he's a freshman. He, he want to get that ball out there a little bit quicker. He just does not have the arm strength yet to get it out there quick enough so that when his guy gets the ball, he's able to do something out there. It just got out a little late. Jamil Basic on the left. Cam Williams in motion. He'll join Demille on the short side of the field. Sante with a quick throw. Now he had to get rid of that one quick. And he took a hit right after delivery. And the offensive linemen are trying to pick him up off the field. We'll bring up fourth down at about 10. As the McNamara pass rush got to him quickly. And he'll, he'll he'll sit down. Yeah, he's he's in pain. Yeah, he got he's he, holding his, his bottom leg. He's holding his lower extremity. Looks like maybe somebody kind of fell in on him as he stepped into that throw, and that's that's what made it fall short. Couldn't really step into it. Yeah, he's been throwing it off that back foot as a result of, of some of these Mustang uh, defensive linemen getting in the backfield pretty quickly. Well, that's the pressure. That's the pressure yep. that McNamara's front four and front seven have been putting on this Carroll team. If they're not able to get that ball out quick enough, um, they're, they're, they're getting home. And if they're not getting home before he gets rid of it, they're getting home as he's getting rid of it, and it's really disrupting the play. Um, T, I'm trying to put a marker on when it was 20 to nothing. I want to say McNamara was up 20 nothing early in the second quarter, and there really hasn't been any any real threat. Uh, of course, McNamara had an opportunity to kick a field goal or, or go for a fourth down touchdown, you know, play at the very end of the first half. That was stymied by Carol uh, Carol Lyons as, as Ben uh, Chandler trying to fight his way into the end zone. But you know, for the most part, uh, the, the Lions have have shut down the scoring. Yeah. Well, to recap, I mean, they had a they had a, a scoop and score right inside the five, McNamara did, so that was you know, a quick Heyman, six. yep. And then they had the, 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 the bad snap on the punt in the end zone. Uh, I think it was Williams was able to run it out, but he only got to about yeah, the eight. The ten, yep. So he had an eight yard short field, so there's 14 right there. And then Lawrence Williams, uh, uh, yeah. With a long run. With a long run, which was really the only successful long somewhat sustained drive yep. that McNamara's had all day. So this game is much quicker than, I mean, much closer than the 20 nothing score that we see on the scoreboard. Good snap, good kick as he gets a Carroll bounce. And that ball is going to find its way inside the five it's to about the two-yard line. Woo, probably the best that. play of the day for Carroll. How about that? To Sean Williams. Again, an opportunity for Carroll to maybe flip the field position. You know, I know they're looking for their first you know, big big break of the day, be it possibly a you know. An I think they're looking for a defensive a, score, or a fumble. That's what something. they're looking for. Yeah. If not, if not a defensive score, at least you know get get a better field position. If you can stop them on third and force a punt, and get good field position and put yourself in an opportunity to be in a scoring position, you know you're going to close the gap a little bit and make this a, make this a game. And that's a oh. jump, and I believe those are the mistakes that crush you as a coach. You know, you got a, a team, mistake. and it's it's it. I mean, you got a team on the two yard line, and you're gonna you know gift them five yards. It's the mental mistake. It's the mental you know just yep. just not focused on it. It's not that's not an effort mistake. That's that's a discipline mental mistake. Yep, they've got to eliminate those. Can't hurt yourself. Charles Fortin in the backfield. With Nine Noah. And uh, that is going to go back the other way as the center didn't snap it when everyone else thought that he maybe should have. A little lack of communication. And uh, once again, McNamara will be right on back at the two yard line. Just like that, first and 10. And as frustrated as Coach Quick was 45 seconds ago, Coach Calhoun is now <laughs> joining that party. 
Now, did they call that half the distance? I guess they, they did. did. I, I mean, yeah. I, it's a five-yard penalty from the seven. Uh, that's that's the rule, though, when it's... Okay. When it's inside the ten, I guess? I don't know. Uh, Can't be more than half. That's why they half it. Charles Fortin met at the one. He's going to get forward progress to about the two. You see, Marbury was again the first one that broke through and made the initial contact. Yeah, and you he saw. has been everywhere today. There he is, right there, slipping underneath. What a great little swim move he had Josiah on the inside Bush. there. Not only is that power, but quickness by Marbury. Kajambu finishing it off. Second and long. There's the handoff over the left side. Gain of about three or four. Yeah, it's gonna bring up third down for the Mustangs. Third and short. They're only gonna need about three and a half, four yards here. And it looks like they're bringing in some meat. Isaiah Inman, and Brandon Freeman checking in. For the Mustangs, Isaiah Inman got a touchdown. How about Inman, as in Mrs. Inman, who helped That's us get right. a parking right. spot today? Keeper for Miguel. And uh, I, I, that's a sack. He was tackled, I believe, behind the line of scrimmage. So once again, the Carolines hold it up. <laughs> and unless, All right, unless now. Glenn can get off an, a really good punt, the Carroll will have succeeded in flipping the field because here you have uh, Mark Butler for Carroll standing inside McNamara territory waiting to receive this punt. So the hang time, fair catch is called for, but that ball is gonna be downed by the Mustangs inside the 40. This will be the best starting field position for the day, I believe. For Carolines, even after, even after Cam Williams' kickoff return to start the game. Well, this is where, the, you know, this is why this is the ultimate team game, right? Defense goes out there, fights hard, is able to get the ball back. And if you're in Carolina on the offensive side of the ball now, you, this is gut check, right? Your defense has done what they've needed to do. They've given you an opportunity. Now it's your chance to capitalize on it. They just have not been able to capitalize at all yet on the offensive side of the ball. Asante Batiste, after coming off with an injury uh, on the last series, he's back in shotgun here for the mm. Carolines. Shocked they didn't go with Arnold here. Bossing in that slot, and he wants all of it right away. He's got a man going deep. And that, that is a touchdown for the... Oh, no, he doesn't. I, he, he faked this out. Again, from that, from we're the farthest away. We're, we're, we're at the opposite end. Jason Adams with good coverage there for the Mustangs. It looks it looked like from here because he that ball just kind of. opportunity, man. Woof. Hey, you know what, though? I love the call. Got to take that shot, right? You got to let the, the defense know. And the only good part about that being incomplete is now the defense is on, on notice that they're capable of making that play. Yeah, you get a guy singled up on the outside. Sante under center, it's gonna be a handoff. And they're gonna try the middle. As Robert Smith doesn't, doesn't see much there. He's gonna bring up third and long here for the Lions. And at some point here with a minute, just over a minute to go here in the third quarter and some of the better field position Carroll's had, you wonder if you're if you're entering four down territory oh, here for the doubt. Lions, right? Yes, you're in four down territory, no doubt. That's right. Don't have to get it all here, but at least, you know. Get a chunk. Give him a chance. Asante, he's gonna move up. He's got some room to run, and he's gonna put up, he's got a guy wide open. We don't see the signal Let's from the referee because he got knocked it. out. Referee's still on the ground. Did he reach over the, the, the goal line? Was he able to get the ball across? The referee, so yes. The referee is down. The referee is, he's not made a signal, and he is down. The, needs to make a signal. The, there's Deshaun Williams. There's no wants signal. To know, or no, uh, yeah, Deshaun Williams wants to know. We don't mean to be, you know, uh, rude to the referee, but I mean, he he is down. Matt Seal is over there. 
He'll get us a scoop. Uh, this ball does not appear to have gone into the end zone. There's no points on the board, and I saw one referee giving the, the one hand up. I thought he had extended that ball. It was close. The plane, right at the pylon. It was real close. You gotta sell yourself out there, young man. You gotta, you got one yard to go, dive. And on third and long in four down territory, Carolines dial up a big play in the freshman. I mean, that's a lot of poison. Keeping your eyes downfield at this point of a game when you've been battered by the opponent's uh, pass rush, that is uh, is commendable. Now, good, good awareness by the young signal caller. All right, so they got very short yardage to go. They got a jumbo package in. The deep man is Robert Smith. And we're gonna get a timeout, McNamara. With 49 seconds to go here in the third quarter. And hey, listen, the way this second half has gone, if Carroll can punch this in and play defense the way they've been playing, we might see something here at the end of the game. I do think the onus right now is more on the Carroll offense to get things going, to get some points on the board. Carroll's defense is doing what they're supposed to be doing. McNamara's not really showing offensively that they can take control of this game and, and run, run time off. Um, it's, it's down to Carroll's offense right now, see what they can do. This being the best drive they've had all, all game long. Yeah. Well, you, you get know, you one know. in, I, I don't know if you go for two. But you get one in and you're you're getting close to two two score territory. I it's a good question. I you know, I'm taking points, but at the same time, the first priority is no mistakes. You know, Carroll can lose five yards here, McNamara can't. You know, they're McNamara's backed up here to their goal line. You don't want to misstep here on offense. You don't want to lose this field position. It looks like uh, Ronald Burke Jr. is now the, the deep guy, and we're going to get a Philadelphia Eagle tush push. I knew you'd say it. We, Kevin and I refuse to say we just call it the push. The push. Just the push. And there's no signal, and they're not signaling. Let's just call it the push. We're just going to call it the push. Inches. Uh, they gained. That's on the one inch line. Look at that. You can't get better camera work than that. I mean, look at us right, right there. Okay, I mean the center can reach this ball in. Asante, he's gonna get in there and they're... I don't know if he got it. They're not raising their signal. I don't, I don't know how you it. can't get that. He did not get any momentum. He forward. didn't lose anything. And again, I don't know why they don't have Arnold in the game. Not This is no offense. To Asante, that's right. To Asante Batista, but... Okay, so the play was whistled dead. Gotcha. And that explains that. So Carroll picked up about, I'm going to, let's just call it, uh, I believe. Is it an automatic first? That's in centimeters that the uh, yardage they gained there. Is it automatic first? I don't think it is. In, in, uh, I mean, they, there's no first down to gain. They call. I think they call it encroachment or, or offsides. Or no, I think it remains second down. Gotcha. And, and nothing. More whistles. That's it. Uh, here, I'm, we're like focused so hard on the goal line, we missed the fact that the, the third quarter is over, and now they're going to walk down the length of the field and place the ball at the one-inch line right in front of us, T. And after three quarters of play with 12 minutes to go in the game, the Bishop McNamara Mustangs clinging to a 20-point lead. And you say clinging because it, the third quarter, you have to give to Carroll. If you're scoring this like a boxing match, the Carroll Lions won the third quarter. Yep, yeah, they, they, they were the sluggers in, in the third quarter. Came out punching never gave up and so they, did, they didn't really gain anything on the scoreboard but I feel like they're maybe kind of seizing control of the game at this point we got a we got the referee down here like the one that they got knocked out he's doing some calisthenics and some stretching I heard them asking how he's doing he says he's okay he's, and he, he he's the one that showed up late yeah I, I mean he didn't he didn't he didn't get his warm-ups in <laughs> did not get his warm-ups in did he get a stretch So he's going to take his spot in the back of the end. So, I mean, the nose of the ball, I mean, there's like a blade of grass, a blade of fake turf grass separating the Carroll lines. And look who's behind center now, the, the middle linebacker. Yeah, it's, T, I mean, you're, you're, the, you're the, the coach here. That's, that's, that's the right call. And he's going to 
find his way yep. in, and we'll get a signal here. There Touchdown. it is. Touchdown, Caroline's on the board. Replace that zero. They put up a six as 66. Now, this may sound strange, but Josiah Bush game. signaling for it. It absolutely, it absolutely is. It's a two-score game right now. It looks like they're going to bring in the kicking team. They're going to get their extra point. And that'll keep it a uh, two touch. That'll make it a two touchdown game without having to get any two point conversions. It's Ronald Burke, Mister Everything, is the holder. That was close, and it was almost blocked. Whew. But Victor Diaz Aviles knocks it in. It ain't over. I'll tell you what, you, and you see the, the, the body language from the Carolines. They do, if you put your hand over the score and looked at the, the body language of these teams right this very second, you might, see, you might think uh, the score was reversed. No, I do. I, I believe that Coach Quick and that coaching staff went in there and more so than drawing up different plays or, or focusing on certain plays, they went in there and just said, Man, you, you, at some point, you just got to go out there and give maximum effort, maximum toughness. We're going to go old school. We're going to pound it. And, and, and you guys are going to just make them hate the fact that they're playing against you, regardless of what the score is on the scoreboard. It's their homecoming. We're here to spoil it. And so far in the third quarter, they've done a pretty good job of that and now making it a little bit of a game. McNamara's got to get first downs on this drive. They got to control a little bit of clock, <clears throat> and they got to kind of take back the momentum that was taken from them in the third quarter. Yeah, I think, you know, you didn't ask, but I'm going to tell you anyway. McNamara needs to come out. How they use their, their running game, Fortin. Take a page from Carol Playbook right now. Try to be try to out physical your opponent. Put yourself in manageable third down so that you can keep moving the chain and keep the clock going. Ball fielded at 12. Lawrence Williams making his way for good field position. And they'll mark him down at about the 35. Actually, even better than that. Than he's, he almost made the 40. If you're driving a black Nissan, you're parked extremely illegally. Sometimes you, I wonder, like, I want to see some of these parking jobs when they announce you. That's some egregious parking. I mean, this place has been full since 10 o'clock this morning. And I know you drive around looking for a spot and you want to make it into the stadium. When the announcer has to announce it, you know it's like it's basically parked on a hydrant at this point. Miguel, shotgun, first and 10, Mustangs. Handoff, Fortin, and he is stood up by Ronald Burke. How about that tackle? For, uh, I mean, you I mean, couldn't get any more fundamental than that. Jerry and Barry and head, and helps him up. Ball, isn't the hot top ball? Yeah, he's got to come out and play unfortunately. No gain. Oh, uh, you know what, they're gonna give him a yard and a half. That's a hard-earned yard and But again, half. a win on the Carroll side, right? That's right. You want to get three or more? They held them to one. Quick out. And they're going to get some positive yardage here. It's TJ. Mm, not much, Shane though. Bliss. One, maybe two. What they get? Shane Bliss gets him into third and super thought, short. So yeah, yeah, I'd say yeah, about like two yards. And they're going to get back to the line of scrimmage. And again, get everyone set. Looking back to coach, and check with me. And here comes a snap. And Fortin, he's gonna try the middle. And he's got a first down for the Mustangs and he gets over midfield. Well, they heard you, Ken. They just need to keep getting first downs. And they're getting right back to the line of scrimmage. There's the page out of Carroll's playbook. Well, but they're gonna, play, they're gonna pace it though. They're not in a hurry to snap the ball. You don't need to be in a hurry to snap the ball. He's probably going to check with the sidelines. Lawrence Williams. And Carroll just gets these, has been getting these McNamara running backs running sideways at the line of scrimmage, mm -hmm. and that's a bad direction 
when when you got the you know uh, Arnold and Ron and uh, <laughs> these guys uh, of Jerryum for Carroll. Well, once again, Carroll wins the first down, but in the last series they didn't win second or third. Big wide side of the field for Lugard, covered by Demille Bostic. Let's see what McNamara does. And they're going right out to it. We saw it here before the play. And Lugard's fighting Bostic. He fights off that tackle. He's working his way up the left sidelines. Well, you can't coach speed. You can't coach size. You, you just can't. I mean, that, that, that right there is a product of a 6 7 man. And they've been trying all day to figure out how to. And that's Bostic. I mean, that's no joke. No. That is just pure, pure effort, pure strength, pure size. It stood out, T. I'm looking and I'm seeing, you know, there's, oh, those are the only two players within 40 yards of each other was Bostic and, and Lugard. And McNamara got it. So Miguel keeps this and slides right around the, is that the 10-yard line. And again, they're running a hurry up back to the line of scrimmage. And we're going to get a timeout from, from Carroll. As they want to slow this train down. But this is exactly what you had said, Ken. McNamara needed. This is exactly what Coach Calhoun said. This is what we got to do. Put together a long, sustained drive. Eating up a lot of time on the clock. Just over five minutes now. They've had the ball. And that just that's going to limit the opportunities for Carroll to bring this within one score game especially if McNamara is able to get any points on the board here. In, Even three in the fourth, would be huge. Fourth quarter, these guys, you know, we're talking about a lot of two-way guys. Uh, you know, that, that timeout was as much about getting something set up for this, this, this particular drive as it was about getting some of these guys a breather. I mean, most of these guys haven't been off the field all day long. But even if they held them to three, it's still a two-score game with two-point conversions on each one. So... McNamara has struggled McNamara in the red zone. Punch it in. Yeah, they have. They have struggled. Lawrence Washington is the back. Lugard kind of in the slot here on the left with the bunch formation of three receivers on the right. And this is a fade to Lugard. And he's going to go up. Mm, he had that opportunity. You got to catch that. Yeah, and he does have good hands. Uh, we saw it on the basketball court. But I'll tell you what, Bostic's been a menace to him today. You know, he's he's almost, he's, his skill has negated the size difference. Because Demil Bostic has had a great day in coverage against the big man. But again, this speaks to, you know, it's almost like, you know, of course, McNamara can get a first down here. Uh, I believe it's third down here for, for the Mustangs. But Carroll seems to have an answer when in the, in the short field. Their defense has, has played tough. Miguel with the keeper. And I think he's going to get enough for the first down to make it first and goal. We'll see where they mark it. That's nice sportsmanship there. No, they're calling this fourth down and, and a, a half a yard. This is a huge play. Now wait a second, we got some whistles out there. Referees are gonna talk about it. Coach Quick wants a explanation for something. I don't know what it is. The head referee's giving Coach an explanation. Maybe they're making dinner plans. There's some good spots around here. That'll be the first time a head coach and referee go out to eat after the <laughs> They're chatting it up. Catching up. They got it. I think the reservation's been made. And they're pre-ordering the souffle. Fourth and short. I wait. I, I'm sorry. I take that. Do I take that back? I can't see the the stick. The ball is quickly thrown out to the side, and every flag in the arsenal is thrown out. 
at the same time. And I think they were, I think that they had given that first down to McNamara. Initially they had marked it as fourth and, and a half a yard. We gotta call this on Bostic again. Well, these are tight spaces. And, and by the way, Lugard just gave the layup signal to Miguel. And if I had to guess, I think that tells me this ball is going to Lugard in the left corner. And there it goes. There, a little height under the ball. And Lugard, does he come down with it? Came down with it. It looked like he had his foot in. They're going to say no catch. No catch. Heck of an effort. I'd, I'd love to see the guard at a foyer just be able to go up and get the ball at its highest point. Yep. And now, that, I think this is something he's got to learn with some experience and, and use his height to his advantage. But the quarterback's got to learn how to use his, his, his height to their advantage, putting a ball where only he's going to have an opportunity to get it or nobody else. Jalen Roberts. Anthony Little in the backfield Balls here. on the ground. And it looks like maybe Carroll's, Carroll's got it. Carroll's saying they got it. And that would be a this huge turn of This is the great they've been looking for all game long. And look who it is. Williams, a young man who's been making plays all day for this, this, this Carroll Lions team. And probably none bigger than this one. The exchange, it just wasn't there. Drops straight down. And he's able to dive on it. Now... The only problem is you're in the second worst spot on the field <laughs> with about 98 yards in front of you. Caroline down. It looks like it looks like a cramp. I'm hoping that's all it is. But you know, hey, once again, the Caroline's defense has has an answer and an able to capitalize on a McNamara mistake in the red zone. Holding them to no points is huge. Absolutely huge. But 98 yards, that's a long way to go for a, 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 an offense that just has not been able to put, put together a long sustained drive on the day. Eight minutes, 20 seconds to go. McNamara up 14, and they're going to be asking their defense to do what Carroll just did. They keep Carroll out of the end zone here. We saw a, some clouds forming here before, but now we got some blue sky. That's beautiful. Sun poking through. Feels great out here. No, no wind really. You couldn't ask for a better day for a homecoming. Now Carroll's got to be careful here, right? I think they got to keep it on the ground at first. If they don't do a high percentage, maybe screen or hit your slant. But they got to, they got to give themselves some breathing room here. Ronald Burke is a deep back. They got a fullback in front of him. Asante under center. Mm, not much breathing room. And that's Dylan Newman. And he really, he's, he's been as advertised. He's a super physical player. He's got speed. And he gets his hands on you and he doesn't miss tackles once that happens. Absolute leader on this defense. <laughs> Big play for Carroll. This is not four down territory. No. Unfortunately for Coach Quick, they got to get some yards. This is when it helped when you had a Nicholas Harbor. You know, 6 5. Oh, Olympic athlete to get you out of a bind. They go with Arnold here. <laughs> Ronald Burke, Micah Buchanan 
in the backfield, and I believe there'll be a timeout. And I believe it's gonna be called by Carroll. Yeah, Ronald Burke Jr. had his arms up as if there was some miscommunication. Weren't quite sure what they were supposed to do. I mean, you're, you're, if you're coaching, you got a guy like Arlo Kajambu on, 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 the, on the field, on either side of the ball, you feel pretty good. You, I mean, he's obviously an absolute stud on defense. We watched him make plays uh, today on offense. I just, I just love, especially talking, having a chance to talk to Coach Quick this week about what he's trying to do, what he's trying to establish in terms of his program. Th these snaps that, that uh, Asante Batista have gotten today are just, I mean, they're worth their weight in gold. And, you know, and he hasn't looked lost. You know, that uh, big play they made uh, downfield just a, a drive ago um, was huge. I mean, again, he, he's been getting, he was getting beat up all day long and he kept his eyes downfield and found a receiver. Arnold looking to his left, puts the ball in the air mm. and he overthrows both the DB and his intended receiver. Again, just give him a shot. Give Sean him an opportunity Williams. to catch that. It was an uncatchable ball. You know, in, in that position, you put it up. Let, even if you throw it a little short, get some air under it. Let your guy have an opportunity. They, they, if McNamara intercepts it, it, it's really not much different than a punt. Shorter punt, but it just hurts. It's frustrating when you throw the ball out of bounds and you, just, you waste an opportunity or even a chance to get a first down. But this is going to be dicey. They've already had some problems with the uh, special teams when they're when they're backed up in their own end zone. Yeah, Cam Williams is doing the count. I believe he's asking for another player, and he will get one. Always want to have a, always if you, when you when you can get eleven guys, you want eleven guys. Unless you're Notre Dame. And then sometimes you do it twice in a row with just ten players. Actually, they were about to do it with ten players, <laughs> and now they're going to do it with eleven. Ball is high, snapped, and he is going to be running it out of his end zone. Oh. And that's, that's a safety for the Bishop McNamara Mustangs. But that's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. It becomes a 15-point game, still technically a two-possession two possession game. And you'd rather give up the safety than give McNamara the ball for a chance yep. to get seven. Bill Belichick would... would uh, not would, a great would, outcome, that's not right. the worst outcome. That's right. And I believe we'll get a punt here. Does anything bring Jerry and Barry down? We call it a free kick. Free kick. I like it. I just love the positivity and the energy from Jerry and Barry today. He, he knows one speed, and it's, it's capital H, happy. It's great. Victor Diaz Aviles on the field. He's got a little bit of a foot. wish that would mean we had sponsors and if you want to sponsor oh. first amendment sports, yes please let us know <laughs> what is that email first amendment sports first amendment sports at gmail.com follow us at plead the first ceo on twitter <clears throat> it's raining ken at it's raining ken we're at open to all sponsorships bracket. absolutely and i like this victor's got a, a nice leg he's been consistently putting the ball <laughs> in the air let him kick it off the ground a lot of motion here. And we're all set. Great leg. Great kick. Ball will be down. I mean, it was, it was an excellent kick. You couldn't ask for a better outcome after giving up a safety. There will be some flags at the end. Some extracurriculars. These two uh, teams, not a lot of love lost on the field. 
There's been a lot of chirping, a little bit of extra stuff. We'll see who that's on. Right, Tyshawn Helm to our right, Ken. Tyshawn Helm. Oh, there he is. Man, I'll tell you, they're missing him today. On his crutches in the end zone over here. He is the former quarterback for the Carroll Lions, the uh, WCAC champion. That's right. Carroll Lions. And he is at Albright College, but unfortunately using crutches right now because he told us before the game that he is torn his meniscus. Uh, he, is, uh, he came home for the surgery. We wish him the best. That's right. Recovery, and uh, we know that he'll get back out there for Albright. When the time is right, he is uh, he's not small. He's no. a big man. He's, a, he's not playing quarterback. He's, he's actually, they're, they're, they're moving him around quite a bit. Yeah, he's he's what you call a uh, football player. Football player, capital F, <laughs> capital P. And he was so much fun to watch. Yeah, he was such a nice season. young man that yep. the, we had an opportunity to talk to him. Wish him the best. Miguel. <laughs> Handoff to Fortin, and he runs over the first tackler. It's still a relatively short gain. I mean, that's about as hard as you can work for four yards in high school football. And he runs downhill. No, he's not afraid of contact, and he keeps those feet moving. Second and six. Another handoff. Fort runs sideways. We got a flag down. That's going to be a hole. He'll pick his way forward for about three yards, and that's where that flag was thrown. And it's going to be holding on Bishop McNamara. That'll come back. It'll be second down in about 15. The clock becomes your enemy now if you're Carroll. It becomes your friend if you're McNamara, but I don't know how much of a friend it is when you keep making these mistakes and getting behind schedule. Second about 15. Lawrence 14. Washington in the backfield for the Mustangs. Trips left. Lugard right. Miguel with the keeper over the left side. He pays the price for a one yard gain. And that's uh, a called keeper. And I think what Coach Calhoun was looking for there is a clock that doesn't stop. Uh, giving Mason Samuels a lot of room and I can't believe he's going to step up on him now. Four wide outs in a diamond formation on the right side and they'll change that up now. It'll be uh, three snaps in a Z formation, men on film style. McGill all by himself in the backfield. He's quickly running up the field. And that'll keep the clock moving. And it'll bring up fourth down. And that's all it'll do is keep the clock moving. They're yep. going to get the ball back. A decent field position. Coach Calhoun is going to wait to bring the punt team on. And now it'll come on. Snap handled. Short. Glenn with the punt, and it's going to bounce straight up. And backwards, so they're going to be right at midfield. Just over five minutes to go. And there's whistles on the field. We want to see. There's a flag, and the referees are doing some counting. And I see some shoes coming off to use some toes. And they're going to have everybody come back. We might have to see this one happen again. Maybe it's against Carroll they were just talking with. Five yards ain't going to be good enough for a first down for McNamara. As Devontae Glenn is already back on the field for the Mustangs. Here another do over. We got a, a conference at midfield, a referee conference. 
but the, typically the, the line of scrimmage hasn't moved. It has not moved. One referee is on his knee. He doesn't even want to be a part of the conference. I've been into enough conferences. They're waving off the flag. All that for nothing. The old hanky and wave. And so does the play stand. It's got to. Yeah. Yep, there it goes. Yep. Play stand. McNamara defense coming back on the field. Game on. <laughs> I tell you what, these referee conferences, you never know what, what they're going to come up with. They meet. They talk. No, no one knows what they're doing. In that, when, they're, when they're in there. Hopefully they do. Well, they seem to have a firm grasp on things. 5-17, Carroll with the ball at midfield. Asante in shotgun. He's looking to throw quickly outside. He's got a man, Darnell Williams. There you go. This is positive yards, it'll bring up second. Quick out route. Second out. Sante does need to be careful about getting that ball out there late or slow. Well, they got two receivers out here with one defensive back, so they got the possibility to run this one again. Sante looking to throw it. He's got a – he had Darnell running in a little bit of a bubble, and, and he tried to put it there. It was a good ball in the sense that well, only Darnell was, could have caught it. It was a scramble drill. He got flushed out of the pocket, and Darnell, who was short – on a short route, saw him get out of the pocket and then took off long. And we got a flag Not down. Not able to connect. It's going to be holding on Carroll. And that's a brutal, brutal penalty. Yeah, you go from second and six to second and 14. I'm sorry, second and six is second and 11. Oh, no. It's... Is that Fortnite? Is yeah, right. it's about second. It's about, you know, let's call it second and 15. We'll split the difference. It's a tough spot. Sante, quick ball, and he overthrows Was that his running throw? back. That wasn't allowed. It's Robert Smith. <laughs> Uncatchable ball. Quickly whistled. Incomplete. Third and long for Carroll. Clock hasn't moved too much. Still about four minutes and 40 seconds to go here in the game. Well, unfortunately, neither has the ball moved other than backwards. Yeah. And again, four down territory. Don't have to get all at once. And we will not see the punter for Carroll on this drive. That is for sure. Too wide on either side. Asante, as he looks to pass, he's roll, he rolls out and he throws it back. Now that's way up in the air once again. Real opportunity missed as Javaris Lassiter. I mean, that, that ball was in slow motion. Time stood still while that ball was in the air. Lassiter was really the best now Carol, chance to catch it. Now Carroll fans know exactly how the Redskins fans or the Commanders fans fan, felt <laughs> when Heineke was their quarterback. Who tended to put the ball up a little of that. I mean, I, I know I'm, I'm all for putting air into the ball, but that much air into the ball for a, for a, a screen is dangerous. And it looks like uh, Arnold's coming back to cue this one. Fourth and everything for Carroll with four and a half minutes to go here in the game. Now, unfortunately, you do have to get it all in one shot. Got time, just looking to the outside. Now that ball is, looks like it's caught by Jason Adams, but the offensive player also has his hands on it. And he, typically the tie goes, yeah, nope, they're gonna, they're gonna uh, call it INT. It, it, it was. It looked intercepted from here. It looked take. intercepted, and then, and then the offensive player tried to wrestle it from him afterwards. It was a, almost a perfectly clean catch. Yeah. Is Jason Adams. Well, Ben Chandler came out with the ball, but I'm pretty sure they'll credit Jason Adams with the, with the INT. The result, really not much different than a punt. That's right. 
But unfortunately for Carroll, there's four minutes and 34 seconds left on the clock. And it's starting to become not just a, a hill they have to climb, but a mountain. Handoff over the left side. Physical run for Antoine Riddick. Ball security is of utmost importance right now for McNamara. No they gain, but the clock runs. So I'm sorry, we'll call that that's about two and a half yard gain. We'll bring up second and seven for the Mustangs. Under four now. I know Miguel letting that clock run. The handoff once again. Goes to Antoine Riddick. It'll bring up third down. And we're now under three and a half minutes to go here in this game. And if you're Carroll and you're on defense, you've got to find every way possible to try to punch that ball loose, strip that ball loose. Yep, the peanut punch. Do whatever you can in desperation to get that ball back. Let's see if Antoine Riddick can finish off this first down for the Mustangs. And it is Antoine and he fights his way up the middle and he'll be brought back by Ronald Burke. <laughs> we'll see if they give him forward progress for the first and they do. First and 10. Bishop McNamara. Now I know Miguel comes off the field and we'll see Tristan Johnson come in at quarterback for the Mustangs as we're just about two and a half minutes to go. Andrew Hicks, I believe, number 20, if I'm not mistaken, is the running back. We'll get a quick check on that. No, it's Riddick, it's still Riddick. And, and uh, Ronald Burke Jr. is not ready to stop playing football right, today. He's doing everything he can to try to get that ball loose. What is the flag now? Really, you gotta Way really do something egregious at this point of the game to get a, a flag on you. Let's we'll see what they're gonna call. It's a dead ball foul, unsportsmanlike against Carroll. Ooh. Unsportsmanlike against McNamara, they will offset. Otherwise known it, as the quit it. It never call. happened. If you think hey, something just happened. Too. Quit it. You're wrong. Stop. Nothing actually just happened, T. Forget what you saw. You can, in fact, triple stamp a double stamp at this level. The only problem is the clock stops and the whistles are blowing. I wonder if they're just... Like just, do they just want to see if the whistle still works sometimes? So it's going to be a referee timeout on the back side. He's pointing to himself. I have no idea what these, just happened. These refs are going to go home. They're going to take a nap, and they're going to be blowing the whistles. They're going to be in their During sleep. their nap. Yeah. <laughs> Second and nine. All right, the clock is moving. We're coming up on two minutes to go in this game. Second and long here. Tristan Johnson. He'll look to work that clock down as far as he can. I must be holding it on the field. He looks frozen. And they got, okay, you can see the backside judge giving the signal. That's Charles right. Fortin, and he'll put his Good head vision. down. Yeah. And he'll be right at, in fact, they'll call it him first down. First and 10 for the McNamara Mustangs, and that should do that it. That may do it. Yep, that was good vision by Fortin. A couple knees here should end this game. And I do not believe Carroll has any timeouts left to stop the clock. So they'll work this down. A couple knees will be all she wrote. And we got the, well, the referees are taking a timeout. I think they thought the 
Demil Bosic was hurt because he's on a knee. But Demil Bosic is like, I, he's like, I know what's gonna happen. You know what's gonna happen. Do I really need to stand up for this? I'm tired. The guy's, yeah, he's been on the field <laughs> a thousand plays today. He's played his butt off against a six-seven wide receiver, and he's done it admirably. He really has. Coming up on 40 seconds to go in this game. Maybe one knee is all it's going to take. Yep. That'll do it. Tristan Johnson with the knee. That's all she wrote. We'll see if the players will come off. And from Forestville, Maryland, on homecoming Saturday, the Bishop McNamara Mustangs improved to 6-0. and A very lofty season result here for the Forestville faithful. As your final score will be 22-7. to Coach Calhoun and Coach Quick, the first of hopefully many meetings on First Amendment sports. On behalf of the team, Luke and Vic and Adrian and Brennan and Jordan, Tim Strachan, I'm Ken Marangolo. Thanks for watching. We will see you next week live from St. John's as the cadets host the Good Council Falcons, I believe. That is correct. We'll see you then. Thank you so much. Have a great Saturday.